I went to Texas Med Clinic. Right? So he says to the Med Clinic, he says, Med Clinic! Fix me up! Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then it do just, me right, Med Clinic, do me right! Yeah, just like... Just do me like I want to do. Load me up. Like, nice, nice, I, I'm nice. I'm going home. I, I ain't gonna be driving. Just wow, do what wow. You gotta, do what you gotta do, Doc. So what really happened? Do your worst! Do your worst! That's what you or want. Or your best. Never tell a doctor do your worst. They're capable of so many bad things. <laughs> okay, They're, so... They are capable so of I, the worst. Well, yeah, I mean, I think they, it, it's kind of like going... We're not bad about the doctors it's, here. It's like going to, like, a therapist and finding out that they're a hypnotist as well. You're like, um... Isn't that against your religion? I'm not sure that... that I, I'm not sure I really want then to it's, go... Then it turns out they're a gypsy. I, I, don't fe I don't feel like I know you that well. Really? Well, I mean, I am That's, a gypsy, so... Yeah, no, I'm saying, you know, we, I, tell, I tell the therapist that, you know. But, so... So I, go to, I, go to, I go to Texas Med Clinic. You pull your pants down. I no, I didn't have to. Um, it's, not that, that, it's not that kind of story, folks. So if you want to tune out, we understand. I, actually, I did pull my pants down. Wow. Okay. So here's uh, what happened. I went to the med clinic, and I get back into the room, and you know, after the you know doctor paperwork shit, and. They, the doctor comes in and I tell her what's going on with my eye and my face, and she and uh, and she says, well, I mean, in that air handler, you know, is there any kind of, uh, uh, you know, is there like a bunch of mold and you know, um, because we, the symptoms you're describing sound kind of like, uh, you know, like an allergic reaction. She was stroking her beard. Uh, yeah, she was uh, probably allergic. And she. Basically, it was like going with the whole, cause I, and I going with the whole, going with the whole, going with the whole. Uh, you know, this is probably just an allergic reaction to like some, you know, dust and you know mold. You're just and stupid. And I mean, and I mean, uh, like allergens were actually pretty low that day, so like I'm kind of thinking like, You're like who's the doctor? Here? The, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And she was, and and I told her about the UV lights. Totally dismissed them. Like this is like no, that, that's that's probably not it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if it's a UV light, like it's killing living things. Like it's gonna kill. It kills microbes. You know, like I'm a living it. thing. Yeah, like I have cells. Last cells, time I checked. I mean, I'm pretty sure. You know, we're not gonna. Just According throw, to the Bible, we're not we're not gonna throw biology out of the window, are we? You know, it's science. Global warming and science. No, dry but, land is not a myth. Yeah, but I but she basically just dis dismissed that whole idea and was like making it more about like uh, you know it was probably a real, an allergic reaction is basically what she told me. And uh, this is where I reacted. I go. And, 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 oh no! And this is and this is and I, I had been speaking with my boss beforehand, and he actually texted me before the doctor came in and was like, you know what? I think it really was the uh, UV light. I'll, uh, call me after you're out of the doctor. The and, lights are coming and, from inside and, the house. Well, and he said, well, and and so basically she said she wanted to give me some eye drops, and she wanted to give me a ster uh, some steroids, uh, like prednisone, you know, for uh, the swelling and stuff because my eye was a little bit swollen. And she said, uh, and she said, and and I said, uh, okay, so. Um, what is, what is prednisone? Is it like a pill or she says, Well you can take it in pill form or we Do can I take it, it the morning or after or we can right. It's exactly what happened to me. Um she or she said or we can do it in a shot. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's, let's just do the shot like right now. And uh, I said what co well first I said what costs more. And she said, Well the shot costs way more. She said, but this is workman's comp. She's like, well, I'm a big spender, doc, so load me up. Yeah, yeah. I said, let's do this, and um, and then uh, the she left, and then the nurse came in, and she says, uh, well, we actually give you this shot um, in your glute, so can you drop your pants below your butt, and uh, below your butt, and you're well, like, I yeah, can see if I can reach, but she was, uh, and and she was gorgeous. She looked like Penelope Cruz, man. Like, uh, like a... Don't say any names! Uh, oh. Sorry, um... She Dr. Looked, Penelope Cruz, we're sure you did a great job. She looked, His butt was gentle. Okay, well, she, well, she says, you know, we can, uh... You need to drop... What need, a lovely you butt! Need, you need to drop your pants... Or below, we'll kill you. ...below your butt, and... Below your butt. ...and then lay down on the table. Spread them. And, and, and the, the 
nurse was so hot, man. She looked like a famous actress. Actress, like. Penelope Cruz. Uh, I was trying to leave that out, actually. Um, okay, because you said no names, and so I was just trying. We're to... We're sorry, Penelope Cruz. Yeah. So, anyways, I I draw my pants for Penelope Cruz or her. You know, double. Stunt double, yeah. Hair stunt double. And so you cut one? And, and uh, no, I, I laid down. You were fresh shaven. Uh, no, I, I, no I, I just laid. Oh, uh, you just waxed. Yeah, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I don't wax. I, I, Anymore? Uh, no, like, I mean, oh, okay. it's, it's not like welcome to the jungle, but, you know, it's. We got a fun game! But it, but it looks. I look like a man, you know? So, from the waist down, I look like a man. I look like a man from the waist up, motherfucker. You asshole. Oh, so, it was doctor. No, no doctor. Doctor, I look like a man from the waist down. Doctor, just, doctor like, please. Shoot it in my butt. Yeah. Okay, now, so your cheeks are spread. She's shooting her load. Uh, no. So she, she stabs me with the needle. And, um... You know, uh, we get done with that. Uh, We're done with this business. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think it was more awkward for her than it was for me. She's like, you know? clean Even yourself up. Even as a medical up. professional, she's like, clean yourself up, Oh my up, god, you this whore. nasty human being. I can't believe I just had to do that. And and then, uh, you know, that was basically it. And, and, you know, I got my paperwork. And they actually made, they made Did you get a phone wait. number? Or? No. Uh, no. Oh. No, she was... Uh, and actually, uh, the guy, uh, there was a guy that, uh, uh, was the one, like, taking all my information and, like, the, my blood pressure and everything. He was like, they didn't and I, and I told him, Well, no, I told him, um, this is before the doctor came in and everything, and I told him, I was like, man, y'all, you have, like, you work with a lot of really pretty women. And, uh, he He's was, like, he what's was your like, name, soldier? No, he was like, uh, he was like, yeah, but they're all taken. I was like, yeah, but that doesn't plug the hole. And he, he started, he got red as a fucking beat, didn't know what to say, you know. I don't know what I'd say uh, right now. And, uh. I'd drink my beer awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dick. No, he, uh, and, and uh, but anyways, uh, life goes on, and they made me sit in the waiting room oh, blah, for, 15, oh, blah, blah. for 15 minutes. She says, After? Yeah, because we want to make sure you don't have an allergic reaction to the prednisone. And, you start, like, and, I, and I sat there. You're like, like, Doctor! I'm so I'm ready to go. I'm feeling something! I'm ready to go right now. You know, I, I was. I, 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 I was ready cut. to leave. That's a deep cut. Yeah, and so I'm sitting there and. Uh, man, 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 man. I mean, I think it's like. I, I, I figure it's like, oh, it's been 13 minutes. Like, they're not going to notice. Then hey, you get and, up and, and you I go, fall I go down. Up, No, I go, I go up to the counter and I, I, I tell the, the pretty lady, I said. Pretty um, lady, uh, I can, where's my it, It's been about 15 minutes, uh, can I get, you know, can I sign out now? Can you give me a release? And she goes, uh, and, she go, and she goes and looks at the, t she, they set a timer, and they're like, no, she's like, no, it's been 13 and a half minutes, you're not ready to go yet. I was like, I, I think if I was having an allergic reaction, like, I would have had one by now. No, it takes 15 minutes. Yeah, like, exactly at 15 minutes, oh, it just becomes crippling, and my throat swells up, and my eye bursts out, you know, like. That would have been fucking crazy if it happened at the 16 minute yeah. mark. Like, you know, eye pops out and everything. But, uh, no. Like Homer was getting choked that was by it. Willie. And then, well, actually, I ended up talking, uh, the next, uh, I actually, uh, took that day off, um, because, uh, because, like... Because you're an American, mind. damn it. Well, well, like, the back of my eye, like, like it, it had some pain to it. You know, like, behind my eye, you know, like, right next to my brain, you know, still hurt. And, um, you know, I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to make sure I was going to heal, you know, before I go back to work. Because, I mean, it, it's your vision, you know, that's, that, that's very important. And that's something that I don't, I cannot afford to lose. Much like pretty much everybody else on the planet. And so, so the moral of the story I, is, if you're near ultraviolet lights, cover your face and your eyeballs. Or turn the lights off before you go in and work on those fucking balls, because that it, it was very. Did that occur to you effort. after? Well, actually, um, my boss was talking about it, and I talked to uh, my other boss, and they were, and basically what we boss on boss. Mm, yeah, that's gross. And so we kind of uh, we uh, 
from their experience, they were telling me that it was basically like welder's flash. Um, between, oh, that's uh, like, like when a woman goes to a certain age and she has hot flashes? Yeah, well, no, like uh, when, when a woman is a welder, you know, oh, she's a lesbian. That's, but, oh, and, women uh, welders are sexy. And, and yeah, and, and you know, she takes you in the back and like flashes you and you end up fucking, you know, in the basement. Oh, that she hits you with a little propane and oxy acetylene. And just, <laughs> yeah, you're getting hot. She's like, wow, I've been getting... flashed. Jesus Christ, get the fire extinguisher. Yeah, like, I don't Jesus know, Christ I mean, is like, I'm out of here. Fucking eyelashes, like anymore. No, but basically like burning eyelashes. Cuz uh, my boss Oh, uh, you made it real. You made it real. <clears throat> my boss was telling me that when he was younger, um he worked A UV uh, light touched him. No, he worked <laughs> he worked uh he worked on this construction site and his job was like basically to like clean up after the welder and um just not looking directly at the light, but he didn't have like, Don't you a, look a at mask, me. <laughs> a mask on. You know, uh, because welders, they put a full mask on, you yeah, know, and along, along with, you know, a hat and an apron. Yeah, and, they, and that's why uh, welders, they always button their jacket up to the top button, because that ultraviolet light can get right in here and just burn the shit out of your skin right there. And so basically, they cover everything. They will wear a cap, everything. And, and, and he had just been around it, you know, and, you know, the guy's welding and, you know, he's not looking directly at the light, but he's like grabbing things around it. And then the next day, like he had that problem, like his eyes felt like that and he felt like his face was all burnt up, you know, like he'd been out in the sun. So welder's flash and apparently Texas Med Clinic, I don't know about that doctor, you know, just saying, um, but I mean, it happens. You know, uh, doctors are just like any other group of people, you know, some are better than others, you know. Um, so wait, so... And then, and then like, the, the day... So, I mean... I, was, I wasn't really, uh, I don't know, I wasn't really impressed with uh, the doctor's diagnosis because the other one made more sense to me, and um, uh, from what I researched online later, um, you know, it, it just, every, everything just fell into place and I was like, yeah, I had welder's flash. So I guess the second yeah. moral oral to the story, folks, if you're listening for our one viewer, would be do some research yourself. Why the fuck not? Like, if you're not going to look it up yourself, remember the doctors don't know all that much more than what the symptoms are. Like, they can only conclude so many... Yeah, and I mean, or if they, they don't can only develop any, so many if they don't have the experience of you got a Tom with, Cruise Vanilla Sky. In. I mean, you gotta I mean, learn the U lingo. UV light victims, other than sunburns, aren't that common. You know, like UV, you uh, people who get their face hurt and their eyes hurt by UV light is very uncommon because that was in a Highlander movie where the, they were worried they built a shield to protect them from the sun because it, everybody's getting burned. yeah. But like I said, aside from sunburns, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it, it's very uncommon because you know if you're in a tanning bed, you have something that. you have something uh, covering up your eyes. Yeah, you know. So, I mean. I mean, that's, it, I, I can understand how, uh, you know, people can, uh, misconstrue what actually happened to me. Misconstrue. But, but, it, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you know your own body and you know your own experience and, you know, you can figure them out. My body out is happened. ready. And so, in conclusion, um, in just conclusion. Watch, watch out for, uh, UV lights, you know, like, uh, uh, or like, uh, you know, if you're growing like hydroponic lettuces or something, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, that UV light, you know, you don't uh, expose yourself to it too much. You know, um, that's, that would be my advice. Any kind of any kind of UV light is not good for your skin, and it's certainly not good for your eyes. And it makes sense uh, because I've heard of people who, you know, are in the sun all the time, and eventually <laughs> they lose a lot of uh, they lose a lot of their vision. Dignity because, and self-respect. Uh, vision because oh. they don't wear uh, sunglasses when they're out in the sun all the time. Those motherfuckers. You know, I mean, that, I've told them a thousand times. Yeah, I try to. I'm outside a lot. I try to wear sunglasses to protect my eyes. You know, I mean, it's one of the most valuable things I have on my body. So I want you, you do have to take your, care eyes. Of your eyes. You do have, he does have each eye insured for a million dollars, so. I, I wish, I wish that million, a million dollars was, a, was attached to my name in any way. <laughs> in debt form. Yeah, why, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no! Everything but that. But, um, 
No, definitely, man. Uh, I uh, that was an interesting experience, and I, I definitely learned from it. Uh, no. Well, actually, um, I thought I thought it was a cool conversation. Um, enjoyed talking to you about everything we talked about. Glad you guys were listening, and um, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. It's bread, you know, like it's uh, <laughs> is Adrian and can I or can't I? Okay, so, so, so you're catching back up with us because we had some technical difficulties, but we're finishing up our review on Wait, Wood Bridge. We can cut this, we can cut this together. I thought it was cut together from behind. I thought it was delicious. I really enjoyed it. You heard him, folks. He said would, malicious. I would like to re recommend this to anybody that likes red wine. Uh, wed, wed wine? Uh, wed, wed wine. Meow, meow, meow. It's meow, best meow, in meow, a meow. styrofoam cup. Dun, 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 dun. It was I think, the cleanest cup available. <laughs> I think that um, I, I think that if you like red wine, you'll like this wine. Wed, wed. But I feel like it was um, excellent wine. I, I would highly recommend this. Um, it tastes really good. It's really easy to drink. It's not. It's not a um, on a scale of one to ten. What do you think? Um, how about six? A six? I gave it a seven. Definitely. You went up, me folks. Uh, I, uh, I I I I recommend this. It's not. It's not very expensive, and um, I think uh, I think pretty much uh, women and men will like this. Look into the camera. Tell the people. I think that. Women and men are going to like it. Or he'll get you. Cheers. Cheers. Well, this has been Adrian and Chris. This is Adrian. I'm Adrian. <laughs> Say that one more time. That I'm Adrian. And I'm Chris. Mayor. Fucking eyelashes left anymore. No, but basically, uh, like, burning cause, eyelashes. Because uh, uh, my boss. Was oh, you made it real. You made it real. <clears throat> my boss was telling me that when he was younger, um, he worked. A UV uh, light touched him. No, he worked. <laughs> he worked. Uh, he worked. <laughs> Japanime uh, store? Yeah, something like that. Like that. <laughs> this is my first time in here. I've never been here before. How do you, uh, why, why did we come here, Mike? Pockies. Pockies. I've never had Pockies. And. and so we will check that out. So I'm trying this um, Japanese soda. Let's Japanese see. soda that I can't pronounce yet. Get that? Yep. And then I'm supposed to use this cap. To pop that marble out. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I think I got it. Sound like it. There we go. Alright, you get the twist ring. Wow, look at that. See a little marble in there. Got that? Yep. Very cool. Alright, so now here we go. Alright, actually it. very good. That's my time to try it. It's for me. Ready? Yep. 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 Is <laughs> <laughs> that artificial? No, oh, it is. It's artificial. It is artificial. Artificial great flavor. Uh, it's actually it's spread out there. It's, it's uh, it's for me. It's great. For Sotaku cake. Ah. So I can't agree because I'm not eating it. <laughs> and, I'm, and it comes with a game where you gotta try to get the marble out without breaking the glass. Oh, yeah? Yep. Just not gonna do it because I haven't done it. 
I don't even want to try. Yeah. Right on. So what would you give this? Uh, would you recommend this soda to people? Yes, I would. What does it mean one of these to uh, host that to try out the other people? I'd be down for that. Awesome. Yeah, I would recommend this. If, you put it, if any big soda drinker, you just do like this because it doesn't taste like soda. Really. Yeah, I would agree. It doesn't really. It's not. It's more juicy. Juice flavory. So, it's your friendly neighborhood, Adrian Lozano here with my buddy Mike, and we're trying Pocky. Pocky for the first Green tea. Okay. Pocky? Okay. I'm about to smoke this Pocky stick. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Pocky? In the name of the Pocky. All right. Hey, that's good. Biscuit sticks. <laughs> Very good. Pocky, you get my approval. But just this once. One. Yeah, one. Just this once. We're going to try more Pocky. All right. Okay, so our next flavor is? Cookie and cream. Cookie and cream. <laughs> Pocky. Pocky, the grappler. It's Pocky with a P, not Pocky with a B. Okay, cookies and cream. Here we go. Two, three. Cookie monster style. <laughs> okay. I like that one a bit better. I still like the green tea. Green tea's still higher on my list. I'm not a big cookies and cream guy. Okay. <laughs> now you ask me. <laughs> no. Okay, for the record, neither one of us is allergic to bananas, and now we're trying chocolate banana. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Maybe on the inside? Oh, I can smell the banana. Oh, yeah. Very banana y. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Lightsaber fight. <laughs> yep. You can take the banana. Though. Oh, yeah. Take it back and take some chocolate. Oh, this is chocolate, right? Yeah, chocolate banana. You take some chocolate? Oh, so it's fine. good. Why, Pocky? Why? Just banana. There's no chocolate on that banana. Uh, is there another one that's like a chocolate colored or? No, that was like, it could be the man. Oh, I know. Uh, random. All right. Next flavor. So our next flavor is? Almond. This one's in a different kind of box. Chocolate almond. We'll see how it goes. It looks bumpy too. Like. It is. Oh, I, I like this. Is the other box still like that? No. No, this is the only box. Show them a box. This is the only box that's got a flip top like cigarettes. Here's the. Uh, the other one's. Package okay. top, you know, like your your juju beans and what have you. Such like this. I'm looking at the box. Oh. Oh. We heard an oh from Mike. Oh. Oh. Package. The way one. Oh. Hey, to keep him fresher longer. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Interesting. It's one of another ones. Yeah, it is. Chocolate and almond. Chocolate and almond. And uh, chocolate coated. Yep, it's chocolate and almond. Made with real almonds. Good. Here we go. Pocky. Pocky. One, two, two three. Pocky. Pocky. Mm, nice and crunchy. That's really good. Very good. You're not allergic to that, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody allergic? We're sorry. We're not making jokes at your no. expense. Our own expense. I just didn't act. <laughs> <laughs> Original recipe, Pocky. Chocolate. Chocolate. Yes, sir. My mouth tastes like almond now. <laughs> that one is very good. I gotta say, that one I like just as much as the green tea. So you know, you can have this one. Oh, bro? Yep, well, thank you. Awesome. For the rest of mine. <laughs> what happens when you have chocolate in Pocky in Texas? It's usually get it. The things. Giant Pocky. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a lot of Pocky, sir. Pocky. Be careful with your Pocky, or you get a bunch of sticks. Okay, so we're trying... Okay. Strawberry Pocky. Who doesn't love strawberries? I don't. Oh, God. Let's <laughs> uh, so try that. Okay. This is always try something at least once. Like this game. Okay. Thank you, sir. Pocky. One, two, three. Pocky. I haven't seen it. Very strawberry milk. Very much strawberry milk. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
What do you think? Good. All of these parkies were pretty good. Very good parkies. Parky, you're doing all right. <laughs> really like that soda, and I uh, like some of the parky. So um, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, the chocolate parky. We will parky another day. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. I want to say hello to my friend Cap in America. <laughs> Cap, we believe in you. Have a great day. See Adrian, Lozano show, and the beep beep telephone. It's a little place to call your own, where the facts are still unknown. It's the Adrian, Lozano show. My name is Adrian Lozano. I'm Michael Norman. And you are watching The Adrian Lozano Show. It's The Adrian Lozano Show. And the beep beep telephone. It's a little place to call your own. Where the facts are still unknown. It's The Adrian Lozano Show. Hello, Mr. Norman. Konnichiwa! Can you tell us, sir, where are we today? We are at Monster Burger. Monster Burger. As you can tell by the monster behind him. Yep. Have you ever been here before, sir? No, I have not. It's going to be a fresh experience. And for the record, I have not been here before either. It's going to be fun. It's, all I know is the burgers are all named after different uh, famous monsters. Okay. And then the Cooper uh, hamburger, it just comes with like a Caesar fries with Cooper hamburger. Okay? Alright. Sir, is this the one that you plan on getting? Most likely. It's a cooker burger. Half pizza, half burger. Pretty cool. I hope it looks like that because that could look good. <laughs> it does. So this is the Kruger burger that my friend here got. Right, Mike? Yep, I got the Kruger burger, the Elm Street special with the Kruger burger and the Kruger fries. Kruger. Cheese, pepperoni, pink uh, tomato sauce. And meat. What do you think? Does this place meet your expectations, sir? So far, yes. And this is my. What did I get? The swamp thing yes. burger. And let's take a look under that cap. Oh yeah, good stuff. We've got mushrooms. We've got ham. We're awesome. Monster Burger, and I enjoyed it. Ruben, what did you think? It was a pretty good burger, I gotta say. Uh, I've had a lot of burgers, and uh, not necessarily the best, but a pretty goddamn good burger. I have to agree with you there, sir. I have to agree with him 100%. Um, thank you so much for giving us your opinion, and I believe we got a new subscriber here. 
Thank you so much. <laughs> You're like, uh, <laughs> don't hold me to that. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks, buddy. Have you ever had fried Oreos? No, sir. No. In a court of law, I can say, no, I have not had fried Oreos. Oh, you're lying to me, man. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I have never had fried Oreos. <laughs> it's it's mm. fun, isn't it? There's uh, powdered snow on top of it. <laughs> Chocolate, two forks, and he's going to have his very first one. Back to your face, how it tastes. It tastes like an Oreo that's been deep fried in deliciousness and um, How's it chocolate? Super chocolatey. I would say um, not overwhelming. Not overwhelming in the way that you would be like, whoa, it's too sweet. It's actually very good and the powdered sugar helps um, just give it that extra little kick. Yeah, very good. Here's a question. Can you guess where you would mostly buy these at? Um, I would say Scotland. No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I was on. Do you get these mostly at carnivores, fairs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like well, that. Like, with, like any place you get a funnel yes. cake. This is pretty much exactly what you find. Every time you find funnel cake at one of these, they're most likely going to have fried oils, fried pickles, yeah. fried ice cream, and all that. Fried ice cream. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to think of the one. What was the thing in the Avengers that they had? Kebabs. They fried their kebabs. You bring your kebab, we'll deep fry it. Not here, but. It's your friendly neighborhood, Adrian Lozano, along with my good buddy, Mike. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa from both of us. And we just got done tackling the monster at Monster Burger. And I got to say, it was awesome. In my opinion, it was badass. I love the cougar burger. I had the Swamp Thing burger. Uh, hold the onions for personal reasons. And damn it, it was good. It was very good. It came with avocado and mushrooms. And yeah, it was amazing. Definitely fried oil. I had milkshake. Yeah, I also have never had fried Oreos. Um, that wasn't an act. I really have never had fried Oreos. They were delicious. Uh, would I recommend this place to a friend? Hell, a friend recommended it to me. Would you recommend this to somebody? Oh, we have it. Yes, I will again. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching. This, uh, this particular episode was delicious. Hello, Batman. Batman, you're amazing. Welcome to Adrian and Chris, episode number two. And this is Adrian, and I am Chris. That's correct. Good to hang out with you guys. New beer that I have not tried before, and he's a trier. This, this is the label, Voodoo Ranger IPA, made by New Belgium. Voodoo Ranger I have ever seen. So uh, here goes. <gasps> Can he do it? So anyway, since you're watching him react to this, I'm going to ask him a couple of questions. So what do you think? Um, well, um, you heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. He said, um, <laughs> what do you say? No, um, I say it's good. Um, it was, it's not overly hoppy. Um, uh, I'm not a fan of the double hop, as I said before. Which is um, also a but dance. It, but it, but it is smooth. It's actually so good. I'm going to taste it a little bit more. I say seven out of ten. I give it a six and a half. I'm not a I'm not a, a professional beer taster or a but, convicted felon. But I will say that um, it has a really clean finish. Like uh, like the uh, there's there's almost no aftertaste. Really, that's the amazing thing about it. And I I feel like I could drink this you know for the night you know like uh, oh it's that's not, it for the night. Hey, what do you? No what more you, water. That's it. No, not like this is the only beer. But like if this was a beer. That um, it is a beer. If I got from a bar, if I went to a bar, I could get this beer, and you know, I could be drinking it all night. You know, what, for the duration of the evening, you'd be renting you know? it technically. Yeah, because I mean, the, you know, you just, sometimes you drink a beer and you're just like, oh, I'm done. I don't even. Uh, I'm done. Get this away. I, from get me. this away from me. This is not like that at all. This is a very easy beer to drink, and um, Are you watching this again. I, and I, I recommend it. Yeah, um, if you like, if if you like uh, hobby beers, it's just it's like a really afterwards. It's kind of a, uh, you know, it's like Iron Kid's bread. 
You know, like it's uh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. The label wait looks a minute, wait amazing. A minute, wait a the minute, label looks wait amazing. A stop, stop. <laughs> Spoiler alert, by the way, he, j okay, so yesterday I went to go see this movie, right, and um, it's all the rage right now, it's called Infinity War, and um, I really enjoyed it, it was a great movie, um, uh, I know it's something that you've seen, I've seen, um, a lot. everybody's, everybody's seen, it. seen it, you know, by now, and um, um, we're gonna, just gonna talk about it, we're gonna see... Uh, get down to the finer points, um, you know, the plot points, and uh, different characters, and what we liked about everything. Uh, it isn't typically what we do on the Adrian and Chris show, but yeah, in but, this case... But, but, I mean, it was a huge movie. Like, like this is... This it's is an real. event. It's what the French would call an event. Like, I mean, from what I can see, like, all the Marvel characters are coming together, and, like, everybody plays a part, and, mm. uh, I mean, everybody from Groot to... Uh, Jesus of Nazareth. You know, um... That was one of my favorite parts, the by the way. The, the Kool-Aid man no, okay, was in wait, there, I That think. was one of my favorite parts, <laughs> by the way, when Tony Stark asked, what master do you serve? And Chris, Chris Pratt was like, what do you want me to say, Jesus Christ? Yes! Excellent quote. Very Excellent. good. Uh, in pretty much every, like, horror movie I've ever seen, I love stories where the... Nemesis or um, the uh, antagonist um, or the killer, especially. I love when the killer has free reign and nobody can stop the killer. The killer does whatever he wants. And I felt like overall, like this had that kind of theme to where, I mean, Thanos, he got to do basically whatever he wanted. Scale of 1 to 10. Um, if I had to go from 1 to 10, I would say, um, uh, I would say like an 8. I, I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good movie, um, all around. Uh, I was, I was tuned in the entire time for the movie, um, I really liked, uh, the, the change in scenery, I liked all the different characters, um, uh, I really enjoyed the plot, the way it, uh, it, it flowed, <laughs> and, uh, motherfucker, you laughing at me, like, what, what, what's up, like, what's the, what do you think, I, I've been talking this whole time, what do you think of Infinity War, like, starting out, like, first off, I liked it. You liked it, okay? Yes, I liked it. Oh my god, my ball sack's about to pop, and then you realize that you I know. don't feel like I've gotten that fear, sir. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, ultimately, you liked the movie. Yeah, a absolutely. And, um, what did you think about, uh, the, uh, what do they call it, the after credits, um... Little clip they had. They're the called end. post credits. Post credits. What would you think of the post credits? Okay, because we see um, Samuel Jackson's character, which his name is. <laughs> really? It's a... Motherfucker, you just gonna tell me or what? Like, I'm not a comic book guy. What's his name? David Hasselhoff. <laughs> I wanna punch those glasses off your face. <laughs> <laughs> so Samuel Jackson as David Hasselhoff. Page. He's Nick Fury, man. He's Nick, Nick Fury. Fury. Okay, okay, I know that name. By the way, okay. Nick Fury was portrayed by David Hasselhoff. That's why I call him David Hasselhoff. I wasn't just being, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Who did he send it to, and what was the message? Hmm. That is the real question. That's been my question. When you saw that symbol on the beeper, the '90s, you know, style beeper, what did you think? I thought that um, they're trying to tell us something, and I don't know what the fuck it is. Me being a comics fan, I know that's Captain Marvel. All right, y'all have a good weekend. You know, it's like Iron Kid's bread. You know, like it's uh, a... <laughs>
Do you know where he is? Hiding. From who? something that he shouldn't have. Stranger Things. So, um... I can hear the music in my head. Uh, Demogorgon, 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 Demogorgon. So, um... In this particular review, I'm choosing not to disclose too many, um, as the French would say, spoilers, uh, on account of, if you haven't seen this, I would like for you to very much see it. It's worth your time. If you're a fan of Stand By Me, even if you don't know what Stand By Me is, or you think it's a song only, um, y you'll like it. It's, it's got nostalgia, you know, we're running out of nostalgia left and right. I mean, we're, um, that was Stranger Things that he sent. Um, the copy I was sent by my uh, friend was the Blu-ray edition, the special, the box set that has a Blu-ray, and meow, meow, meow. Oh, it's in the player right now. Anyway, uh, I'm doing rewatching it. I'm doing a rewatch. They put a trailer for season two right at the beginning of the first disc, which I thought was poor form, as um, some of the Australians I listen to say. That's poor form, but. Um, Capping the stranger of the things the stranger of the things uh, The first four episodes are really world building um, is establishing what the premise is like the first episode it gives you the premise will buyers is missing That's given away in the trailer like a 99 out of a hundred times kid goes missing the kid is with a parent or a relative well, What about the other time? What You said 99 out of a hundred what about the other time? The one! And, um, we meet Eleven, and the boys meet Eleven in the rain, and, uh, we get introduced to the Chief Hopper, who's, um, pretty fucking scary. He's a scary hopper. And, um... Scary. Hopper going into the lab, and man, if, like I said, the guy's just a monster. Amazing, like, badass dude. Just, you remember me, it's Hopper. You remembered, bam, right to the face. Uh, <laughs> it's got, the guy's awesome. Um, and, uh. I became a producer. Um, I was in the middle of doing a reading for her, and she and, stopped um, we get uh, to see Winona Ryder back in action, and I am a big Winona Ryder fan. Um, she's still got it, man. She's got those acting chops. I believed every single part of Joyce Byers' uh, conviction of her life. Actually, uh, yeah, the day that um, the show was coming out, I got a, an email from them saying it was the price was going up to twelve ninety nine. Oh yeah, I got and that. And it was like there was an ad for the show with my face, <laughs> and it was like, but you have to get from seven ninety nine. To, so, but yeah. but I do. I, I actually, it's da it's dangerous but great. So like you, in a way, squad. are the face of the Netflix price hike. <laughs> 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 what a treat that is. <laughs> Real, um, the core of the story begins to become very apparent once um, episode five kicks in and you see Hopper's uh, ripping his place to shit and fucking looking for the, um, he's, his place has been bugged. And um, when you get knocked out after breaking into a secret lab, he wakes up at his place and yeah, it's, he freaks out and it's, like when you see him tearing his place apart, you're like, this guy's, like I said, they're, they're, He's a monster. He's a monster, and I'm looking very uh, forward to seeing him as Hellboy. I think that's going to be amazing. Um... Hello? My personal philosophy on spoilers is, is the same as Grace Randolph's. If somebody knows something, I want to know it too. It's just, why not? 
you know, it doesn't ruin the story for me, I feel. Like, you could tell me the ending of a movie, or you could tell me which character dies, and I'll still watch the movie. For one, even if you tell me how the character dies, oh, he's stabbed or whatever, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'd like to see the context of that and see the actual leading up to it. You can't ruin a movie for me, or you can't, you really can't stop me from seeing a movie. So yeah, wrapping up this review, like I said, it's not too many spoilerific details and whatnot, um, because it's worth checking out, it really is, it's definitely worth your time, like I said, if you like Stand By Me, you like 80s nostalgia, it's worth checking out, um, the other thing is, uh, it's an easy story to follow, um, fun little ride to go on, and, um, yeah, that's, it's worth your time, uh, and that's just my opinion. Thank you very much for watching my Stranger Things review slash update. Meow, 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 Okay. Um, for all you Robert Stack fans out there, he's great. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And, um, if you didn't like this video, then also please like and subscribe. My, um, first subscriber and my first, um, uh, I guess supporter, or, um, sponsor, uh, also sent me this, which will be the subject of one of my upcoming future reviews, which I'm looking forward to. I'm not familiar with the boosh. The boosh is loose. Uh, no, that's from, yeah. Uh, how did this, yeah, you, anyway, if you know Paul Shear, you know that that son of a bitch is a genius. That wasn't unzipping my pants, I just pulled this <laughs> sticker off of the, wow, real, like, for real, I, I wasn't kidding, like, like, look, look, okay, this one wasn't as, wait, 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 it's like, oh, <laughs> dude, it's down there, it's like, who are you talking to, no one, okay, ready, ready, oh, yeah, you're, you're not, you're not representing me well here, Boosh, you're, you're doing me dirty, Boosh, you're doing me, I'm getting red, oh, God, uh, uh, you can hit stop at any time, what are you doing, I don't know, who are you talking to, I'm not sure, Damn it! Alright, forget it. I did not unzip my pants. I did not! Hello! What's going on? It's Adrian and Chris, and we're going to be checking out... Um, this new uh, movie that we uh, actually saw a trailer for not that long ago. This guy got all uh, hot in the biscuit about it when he saw it. It looks awesome. Yeah, it so... It looks really cool. It's, was, an, it's an animated uh, Batman uh, ninja. It's from... Uh, I guess Japan. Uh, that's my guess. I, that'd be a you safe know, bet it, to say. It's yeah, from Japan, I mean, but it's but you see Batman in a samurai suit. Um, you see a lot of characters actually. You see, uh, uh, you know, Harley Quinn. You see Joker. You see Two Face. You see Robin. Um, I think I think Clayface is in there too, isn't he? Uh, Gorilla Grodd is also in there. Yes. So we will let you know what our verdict is. Uh, for you, no time will have passed. Uh, we just got we just got done watching Batman Ninja. Pretty cool watercolor stuff, but anyway, going on, so it starts off with Batman getting teleported back, and he's been gone two years. Everybody else who was involved with it, Gorilla Grodd set up this machine, uh, everybody else who was involved with it, um, Two-Face, Joker, uh, Harley Quinn, Catwoman, Catwoman, I don't know if I mentioned Catwoman. She's not really a villain. She's not really a villain, though. Like um, she, 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 she betrays Batman, but that's her nature. A, yeah, she has her a, feline nature. Yeah, she has a... So, um... Where was I? Giant robots? No. That's oh, the, that Cat, comes later. Catwoman. Catwoman. And, She's and, there, and um, she finds Batman, who just um, he j just arrived in um, in Japan, and gets Catwoman has chased been there. down by some Joker guards. Yeah, and then with he, badass masks, by the way. Yeah, he he kind of fends them off, and you know uh, ends up meeting up with uh, Selena Kyle, and. Look at she you had throwing around there. comic book names. She had already been Serena there. Serena Kyle. Uh, uh, Serena. Serena. <laughs> Serena Williams <laughs> she Kyle. <laughs> she, she's all badass. She time. had already been there for two years and, um, you know, kind of was telling Batman about, you like know. Like I've been with Alfred the in the biblical sense. Yeah, they, they have, uh, 
a layer set up, you know, like with a, a small bat cave. But yet they said that the other people like Red Robin, um, uh, Robin, Red Robin, and the Red Hood, uh, and Nightwing were all there, but they hadn't shown up yet. They weren't part of the, um... They, well, they just weren't hanging out with uh, Selena Kyle uh, and and, and, <laughs> and uh, Alfred. Alfred. Yeah. yeah, they were like, let those two lovebirds alone. <laughs> no, um, not really. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we go on to uh, the Batman getting the Batmobile back from Selena Kyle, and then the Batmobile gets he goes up to face the Joker. He gets destroyed, but in um, he, it goes. I mean, it goes from uh, he goes from driving the Batmobile. To uh, the Batwing, to uh, the motorcycle, the Bat cycle, um, and Joker just destroys like all of them. Yeah. Uh, with the, it, basically the the samurai house just turns into this giant um, robot. It's a house with arms. It's a house yeah. with big giant arms. Yeah. It's a house with arms. Um, that definitely uh, it, w w it, it kind of knocked Batman on his back because he. After, he after that, he didn't really man. have any. He didn't really have any um, technology. You know, he didn't have. He you know, thought he was alone. He couldn't just go back to the Batmobile and pull out, uh, or to the Batcave and get another Batmobile. Can't just pull yeah. it out anymore. Yeah, it's 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 all him and um, basically the technology of the time. And then he finds out that um, there's this uh, ninja clan that has been waiting for him. this Batman <laughs> to arrive. And As ninja clans do, I mean, I don't know, but they might. Hey, to each his own, you know. I mean, whatever. <laughs> to every do. ninja clan out there, we salute you. Yeah. In, in, wait, I don't know how to salute a ninja. How do you salute a ninja? If you know how like to salute a ninja, I think it's like this. Oh, with the fingers, and then you do that. <laughs> right. I swear, you, or you, 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 you do that to a ninja. The ninja will cut off your fingers from the top <laughs> and the bottom in one stroke. He'll cut off both fingers, and you'll be like, what? "I think no, I think he would just punch you in the face." <laughs> <laughs> ninja start punching. Right. All right. So we're getting off track here. Anyway, uh, the review. Okay, so well, we're laying down the story is what we're doing, but um, well, it, basically, it continues and it introduces um, the diff uh, the different nemesis and nemesis and, 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 and nemesis. Uh, the samurai nemesis, and they uh, uh, basically they're dominating different parts of Japan, and they're all struggling for power. And they the Joker has the most up, parts. The, mo the Joker has the most power. He's the one that's closest to you unifying Japan. Um, and then um, he uh, Batman teams up with Gr Gorilla Zod. Gorilla Grodd. Gorilla Grodd. I'm Gorilla sorry. Grodd. And Gorilla they, Zod uh, would be like a Superman like hybrid crossover, which would be cool. And they uh, and they kind of knock. The Joker off of his pillar, and supposedly then, he loses his mind and whatnot. And but then, the Red Hood sees right through that shit, and he because he's the Red Hood, and he comes back. And um, by the way, we already said spoilers. And all the and all of these uh, Gotham gangsters get together with, and they all have different houses uh, or castles. They're almost like castles, really. They're these big giant. Not like uh, Frank Castle. No, <laughs> more, not White Castle either. No. You know, they they ended up turning into these giant robots, and these all these Formed giant Voltron like Power Rangers type of like it's you yes. know what would ancient Japan or feudal Japan be without giant robots? It wouldn't be Japan like that's. I, I think that's the main thing. It would yeah. not be Japan if we didn't have giant robots. Anymore. Very cool giant robots houses. They, it was, with a, it, arms. was a, it was something I don't think I've ever seen with Batman. You've never seen a house with arms with Batman. No, that was that was very cool. Also, um, it was cool but very unexpected to see a unification of monkeys or um, and bats uh, and bats. bats. Monkey, bats. Monkeys and bats. Monkey Chi. Work, and working together. Yeah, Monkey Chi. Mon Monkey Chi is cool. He plays this. You game. never see him fight, but that boy can play a flute. I bet you he could fight too. You know. He's a flute player. That's all he knows. That's all he knows. That's all he cares about. Yeah, I think, and I thought it was cool how, um, you know, the different uh, giant robots were fi uh, were fighting, and then you see like the actual people fighting. Yeah. You know, um, you know so you had the fight between the uh, the giant robots that these people built and the actual people fighting each other. Yeah. You know, I like, like uh, the Red Hood fighting Deathstroke. Um, yeah. And uh, there was, uh, of course, Batman fighting the Joker. And you had uh, Robin fighting uh, Poison Ivy, and um, uh, Selina Kyle fighting Harley Quinn. 
Which um, was, that was cute. I did like that girl on girl line and then to keep your tongue in your own mouth or something. Yeah. That, that was yeah. cute. That was very cute. Yeah, they had some, um, they had some good uh, uh, comic relief folded in there. Yeah, some, but and, it wasn't, but it was not in no way funny. And the Joker lot. was very menacing, very, um, what would you say? He looks yeah. insane. Especially when uh, when his face when his face is all uh, like it looks like the bottom half of his face is all red, just like covered in blood and everything. It, it was it looks, blood. it looks it looks nuts. Okay, so seven out of ten. Awesome. Seven out of ten. What would you give this? Uh, if I had to do seven out of ten. Uh, six and a half. Uh, no, more <laughs> like a nine and a half. It was oh, really wow. good. I, good. I, I, uh, I'm not. Um, I, I don't really don't have uh, anything bad to say about it. Um, Ever since I saw the trailer, the trailer, um, it had me at hello. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, and, and it did not disappoint. The movie did not disappoint, um, in any way. No, it's um, actually like a full length, like hour and a half of, um, the continuous story. Anybody who's a Batman fan. A definite need to watch. You yes. gotta check us out. It's a yes. must watch. And the, and the animation is really And of course, if you've watched this and you haven't seen this yet, why are you watching this? Spoilers to be in the fucking title. So. Or, or, you know, maybe you're one of those people who likes watching spoilers before you go see the movie. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, I, uh, I highly recommend it um, to people of all ages. You know, it's, a, it's just a great Batman story. 18 and up. 18 and up. No. <laughs> all ages. No, no. It's all, it's all ages. It's all ages. It's all ages. Especially the girl on girl. It's all ages. It's all ages. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they think they're just talking about fighting. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. That's what it means. That's all they are talking that's, about. That's exactly. Go to bed. <laughs> Enjoy. See you later. Batman gets teleported back to feudal Japan, just like the Ninja Turtles in Secret of the Ooze. The, boy, no, that's part three. And part three is when they went back to Japan. Part two is Secret of the Ooze. Yeah. I got my and turtle mixed up. I mixed up my turtle. How embarrassing. So good. I'll edit this out. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs>
So, today we are going to do a little bit of uh, something different, because we do something different every episode. We've got a special guest. He's oh. not going to talk much. Beetlejuice. Shh, say his name. Oh. Voldemort. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Vladimir. Vladimir. <laughs> Vladimir. 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 Or, uh, I think it's Bob. No. Uh, like, 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 but they, they church it up, you know, to give it, like, Vladimir, or, you know, something flashy, you know, because Bob is not, you know, it's not as exciting Bob as... Bob did flash as, people, but he's not flashy. Well, yeah. he's flashy, but... I'm pretty sure Beetlejuice would... I mean, uh... Do you remember Vladimir. in Beetlejuice where he, like, they're like, what are your qualifications? Oh, yeah, my qualifications. Can you be scary? And he fucking busts, like, yeah. snakes come out of his head, and he opens his jacket up, he's like... Uh, what do you think? Like, like a bunch of bugs and nasty. Well, they didn't show you. They just show you from behind. Oh. Yeah, they just show you, like, him scaring them and, like, what do you think? <gasps> yeah, it was, it was awesome. That's a great movie. We got way off track. Absolutely. I lived through the Black Plague and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. Now, what do you think? You think I'm qualified? What I mean is, can you be scary? Oh, oh, I didn't know you were asking me. Can I be scary? What do you think of this? <laughs> you like it? Okay. Um, okay yeah. We went to uh, a gun range today, and we shot uh, two pistols and one shotgun. Here we go. Good shot. Jolly good lad. Jolly good. <laughs> Here we go. Hit them both. You blew a piece out of that sucker. I'm here for the Beetlejuice. He's here because of that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he invited me. You know, he gave me them crazy eyes. Who can resist? Hey, come on, man. Let's go. Now, we had a, a 40 caliber that we shot, uh, Smith & Wesson. I don't know if I got any footage of that. Uh, yeah, you got, uh, I think you got David shooting that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, I don't know if he got him shooting... No, no I'm not going to do this. We're talking. <laughs> so, no, I don't know if he got him shooting my gun. I don't know. Right. We'll have to check. You tell yeah. us. Either way, uh, <laughs> we shot the, uh, we shot a pretty good number of rounds. I think, uh, I think we shot maybe, uh, maybe 150. Yeah. Um, in the, in my pistol, the 9mm, and then I think in his... We shot at least a hundred. Um, uh, uh, probably, probably about the same. I think, um, maybe a little bit less. Yeah. He has, um, he has smaller clips. Um, like I think his uh, holds, I want to say fourteen rounds. Mine holds seventeen. Mm. Either way. Um, it was, Either way, there. Was... Well, he well, because he was having a problem with his gun the last time. The first kept time, jamming on him. Yeah, and he replaced the recoil spring, and it worked great today. You know, we didn't have any... Didn't jam once. Yeah. Well, I think it, it it jammed, like, one time at the very beginning, and then that was it. Everything was... Had to get one out of awesome. the way. Yeah, you the know... The old just... rub one out first, you know, before you go on the date. Something about Mary style. Yeah, it makes sense. You know? <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you agree with me. Clear I'm glad your you head. agree with me on that one, because that one was... Clear, like, clear your head. Very far out there. Yeah. Um, uh, then we also... So, so oh, what continue, it, uh, continue. So, um... What did you think, like, uh, the difference between the two guns? Like, uh, what, what was the biggest difference that you noticed between the forty and the 9mm? It seemed, uh, well, first off, weight-wise, it seemed like his gun was heavier. Like, and it felt like the recoil on that one, even though the gun was heavier, it felt easier to control. And, like, with yours, it's it's got a lightness to it, but that it's got a kick. You know what I'm saying? And your kick, like your first shot, like the barrel comes up a little bit. More. Yeah, you're, it's got more of like a high, like a high, like one of those dancers that does the high kicks. Oh, like yeah, the rock, like, like the rockhead. Yeah, like I felt like because his had this more weight. This is the forties. I could, wow. we I, can't I could be completely air. wrong or stupid, which I am from time to time. But it felt like because his gun was heavier, it didn't fly up as much. You know, seems reasonable. And but this it, is it just, also could be, you know, the way uh, the way the uh, the grip is designed. Well, what know, did you think? Uh, what was because you, you've shot both I, more than I have. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I I think even though he had a more um, powerful uh, um, round, you know, he had 184 grains or whatever, you know, that's a 40 cal, and then mine is only it was only 115. I still hi feel, mom. I think um, if you take both of those into account. Um, I think, yeah, mine, 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 mine does 
uh, have a little bit more of a recoil yeah. than his does. Hey, so I wasn't that far off. Because it really does feel like, like, yours, like, the first couple shots on yours were very, um, on point. And, like, like, all that like you were saying, the first shots are the best shots. Yeah, because, uh, well, especially, um, when you're starting out and you're not, uh, you know, you don't have as many rounds under your belt, so to speak. Um, you, like, I, I noticed myself doing that when I first started. My first couple of shots, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think too much, you know, I would just aim and fire, and then it got to Never where, think too much. And then it got to where, um, you know, I get halfway through the clip and I start, you know, seeing where I would shoot, and I'm trying to, like, think about what I'm doing too much, you know, like, um, failure by thinking too much about it. You King know. of overthinking over here. Yeah, and so, um, and That's so my I, crown, I, by the way. I, 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 but once you, once you kind of <laughs> get into a rhythm, it's, uh, for lack of a better term, it's, uh, feel the beat of the rhythm of the night. Like, you ever, you ever, uh, you ever been bowling? Um, like, maybe once or twice? I have been bowling once, and it was terrible. My ball went into the other lane, oh, and I was swiftly well, you're escorted not, out. Well, you're not supposed to throw it overhand. I also did not know that. It's, uh, it's called the Bracken Gun Range. Bracken Gun Range, very good place. Yeah, I, I really very liked safe, it. very like very like. Yeah, very. Uh, well, I mean, not that there's any dangerous ones, but well, like a, it was just a professional atmosphere. Yeah, and uh, the the uh, the guy running the place was pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, and uh, I liked uh, how I, it had more of a relaxed atmosphere. I guess uh, just. In the sense that there was that's what you much, want in a gun range. Yeah. Well, the, well, it's the other place. There was just more, uh, a lot more hustle and bustle. You know. Yeah, definitely. This people. is a smaller place. Yeah. Um, smaller, like um, more compact. You know. You yeah. Don't... They didn't have as many lanes. Um, also, the lanes weren't as wide. Like um, you got a lot I of shell casings. I think we saw a Penny Lane. No. Yes, Penny Lane. Yeah. She was. Uh, she was shooting a uh, big old hand cannon. Tiny little pixel. Uh, we also went with uh, David, um, who's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of the show. Yeah, and he's, he's, a great person. And a, and, a, and a good drummer. Yeah, badass uh, drummer. We might yeah. stick in a little drum segment. Right at the end, somewhere. Somewhere? You don't know? You gotta watch to find out. Now we had, uh, so we, and he brought his... Right now! <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a bunch of glow, st glow st fathers teaching you know daughters and sons how to shoot and it, it was really it just showed you the other side of you know gun use um yeah responsible gun owners yeah very, like you know? there, there was nobody there causing problems everything was great it was, it was a great day you know like yeah it was really it was really cool the, uh the, the rifle range they had some loud guns out there today. very loud rifles yeah, they, Very loud. They had, uh, I think one was a thirty out six. One looked like, uh, like a. 50. That, now that's the five speed, right? The the thirty out six. It's a five speed, and you got to put. Yeah, um, with the racket pinion steering. Yeah, then and you got to put uh, what is it? Only uh, super unleaded or premium? You got to put premium in it. Synthetic oil. Synthetic full, oil. Full, full synthetic. Yeah. But, I'm still learning. But they had. Um, but what we shot? Um, my uh, I have a. Nine millimeter. It's a uh, Beretta PX4 Storm. Beretta Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna take ya. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> now.
about that gun range. Like I said, um, there's not as many people there, so you um, you have more time. You like you feel like you have more time anyway. I feel like I have more time. And uh, what, is that like Muay Thai? I feel like I'm Muay Thai and sweaty. It's it's humid here in Texas. It's hot and humid. That's it's that one like young. Stevie Ray Vaughan song that nobody wanted to produce. They're like, no. It's we, humid down in Texas. We've already got flooding. We know it's humid. And I'm sweating on my balls. Now, I think... I'm sweating <laughs> on them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we do it here. All we goes sweat on them. To the balls. It all sweat. All the sweat goes straight to my balls. <laughs> wow! I'm leaving that in. I don't care. I'm leaving that in. All right. Now, I, uh, no, but, you, but like, uh, people have. Uh, it seems like people, you know, kind of get together and like talk. You know, like the guy next to you. You know, it's like a, it's like a friendly kind of um, vibe going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at the and you know, guys that um, you know don't even know each other will start talking about you know their guns and guns in general or yeah, know, it's very um, almost, it's, it's almost not communal. Yeah, you know, very, very much kind of like that. Um, a really cool place. Um, all in all, highly recommend it. Um, can't wait to go back again. Yeah. Holy shit! That's true. We don't know where we are. Yeah. Um, neither do you. Spooky angle. Now. It's not even October. Okay. It's not even June. <laughs> 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 We're not telling you what it is. We're not or where it is. Or when it is. Or when it is. But it's it's good to feel creepy all year round. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. It's the only laugh I got. I have to figure out how you shoot. You know, um, and <laughs> not like not like a what's that that terrible movie. Where they 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 supposedly if they sling the gun uh, the gun around he's talking about wanted yeah where they they, they sling Which, the gun around originally based on a comic curve, book that's gonna curve it won't bullets don't curve yeah. but uh, it was based on a comic book they literally took everything out of it because the guy is a villain in the comic book they took everything out of that comic book and just like kept some of the weird stuff like <laughs> it was only supposed to be him he was the one and then everybody else was like anyway it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so we're going. But yeah, um... Wanted sucked. Yeah, it was terrible. Well, yeah, I really feel like, uh... You could fling those bullets. <laughs> Don't do that at the gun range. Don't do that at the gun range. Again, the place we went to today, uh... I, overall, um... I, the other thing I like about it is, um... Well, it's cheap, and uh, you can uh, you can sit there and you can fire as many rounds as you want. And, yeah. I mean, it's, only, it's only $9 for, uh, for one handgun. And as many people as you want can shoot it, and uh, it's um, it, it was just a really it's just a really relaxed atmosphere. I like it. Yeah, it was very cool. And um, I liked uh, oh, and then we went uh, and shot the shotgun. Oh yeah, um, that was pretty cool too. Uh, I have a, a twenty gauge uh, Mossberg Maverick eighty eight. Nothing fancy or anything. Nothing fancy, you know. Just you don't need a well when it comes to shotguns. Um, you don't need nothing from what fancy. I, from what I understand, you know. You, just point you, and click. Yeah, you don't need, uh, I mean, you can buy really nice shotguns, and, you know, the Which I'm going to have to end up doing, because my shotgun isn't so nice. Well, your shotgun, um... Don't say I, its name! It looked like, uh... <laughs> well, it looked like inside the barrel there was, uh, maybe some pieces that got, like, tacked on I'm there. I'm a dirty, dirty man. Yeah, the... It, it might need to be bored out or something like that. But, you know, for the... Bored. <laughs> but you might want to, uh... Anyway, so I'm going to pick up a new one, kind of like his. Yeah. yeah. So we can be matching, you know, back-to-back, -back, uh, Matrix style. Are you going to, are you going to get a, because uh, I have a 20 gauge. Are you going to get a 20 gauge? Yeah, because that's, thinking... I'm going to get a 20 gauge. Because yeah. that's what I have now, and that's kind of the same consistency of, like, the kickback and the weight. So... Yeah, because, I, I mean, t I can shoot 12 gauge, but I feel like 20 gauges are easier to shoot. Yeah, it, that was you definitely know, the case. The, you know the, that recoil. You know it's it's really hard, especially like if you're going like maybe dove hunting or something. You're gonna want to be able to shoot um, more. You know, and if and if you're and I'm gonna shoot kick, you more. And if the and if the kick, you know, is giving you a problem. It did have a bit of a kick, but it was nothing to where I felt like oh ow. You know, yeah, like it wasn't it like hurts. a hurts. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very uh, manageable... You, yeah, as long as you nestle it um, in your shoulder good. Well, even like my hip, like when I pressed it up against me, like I pressed it more into my arm than I did into my hip when I was shooting... Uh, 
was about to say side saddle. When I was shooting, <laughs> when I was shooting lady style. Wow, wow. No, when I was shooting, they don't say because there's like a lot, a lot of ladies out there with guns. Um, uh, and they ride side saddle. And wow, <laughs> impressive, very impressive. You're a woman riding side saddle. Okay, um, so shooting. They do like, it in movies. You don't listen to me. I don't know if I wow. <laughs> I don't know if I have uh, that footage, but anyway, I felt like shooting from that angle was more difficult to control. Yeah, it's like it's easier more... to control when you um, are closer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But from the hip or from I guess the midsection, everything kept going up. Like every yeah. shot was up. I mean, I know it kicks up because that's part of it. I, well, I felt like um, when I was shooting from the hip, I was either shooting too high or too low. He always shoots from the hip. He's like, hey, lady. Hey, let's uh, let's do this. Now, I think that um, I was definitely more. I mean, obviously, you're going to be more accurate, you know, when you line up the sights, you know, because you're seeing where you're shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Properly, but um, yeah, I think uh, I I don't think we had any problems with the shotgun at all. None. Um, none. The yeah. only yeah, there was none. Like no issues. It was uh, it, it was fun. The um, uh, we did get some good footage of that too. Um, yeah, we'll inject that. <laughs> now, um, I also... Cut out my wipe my face. Um, and we're back! <laughs> and, and, and I did like the, uh, the fact that we totally destroyed that target. Like... Yeah, that a, target was, it was a mass. Yeah, and it, it, it looked like, uh, it looked like the, the shavings you put, like, in a hamster cage. By the time we were done, yeah, it was just it was just you know pieces. I think we went through like peppered. Uh, pepper is what the expression I believe I used was. Yeah, uh, it's a little pepper it's on peppered. It. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, that shot almost looked like pepper, like uh, the actual like. I believe that that's to what it refers. Yeah, I believe that's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, everybody who watches this, you're great. You're great, and thank you for watching. Um, Overall, um, great day. Um, the great experience, and actually, it was pretty cool because. Right when we picked up and were leaving, that's when it started to rain. Yeah, right as soon like, as like, it, like as as today we, started off with rain. <laughs> yeah, and then it cleared out, and as we were walking away from the, from the shotgun range, yeah, it, then start, it started drizzling, coming down, it started coming down. Yeah, so um, all I could couldn't have planned it better. Couldn't have planned a better day. I enjoyed it very much, and uh, we definitely give this place a thumbs up. Uh, as far as like reviewing gun ranges go, like I would definitely go back there. Yeah, I I've been there a couple of times and I, I love it there. Yeah. Um, it's uh, uh, and sometimes like at bigger gun ranges, I feel like you get lost in the crowd. There's there. Well, <laughs> it's, it's not like I'm trying to stand out or anything, but it's just everybody look at me shoot. I, oh, it does this video. Well, I just feel like you know sometimes like there's just people just that are just they're just waiting for you to get done so that you can. Yeah, pass, yeah. You know, there there, there wasn't to, as much of that. There was like every table was full. But there wasn't like people standing there like twiddling their thumbs or yeah, whatever. It was like waiting for this guy to get done so we can do what we came here to do. Yeah. There was none of that. No. It's and very, and, very and cool. I've, nev I've never been there when it's like that. You know, they oh. open up more tables, you know, um, the busier seasons, I think. But um, either way, uh, great place. Yeah, very cool. That uh, the the headsets that they gave, uh, the sound suppressors that they gave us. The shotgun cool. earmuffs were way better than the other earmuffs. I usually have yeah. like little like like right in the ear, the little uh, little yeah. orange like scrunch them up and you. Well, I actually can I get it out? You know, I, I don't know. I, He's trying to break the target. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Like, I didn't know. But I was I'm trying. Able. But um, either way, uh, great day. Hope to catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Deuces. What? <laughs>
Is that Bishop Brownie in there? That's none of your business. <laughs> I'm making it my business. Oh yeah? <laughs> Take this color changing spoon and tell you otherwise. Right? And it's, uh, it's a great place. This is a wonderful place. Where is it? Where are we? We are at Arctic Ape Wild Desserts on Walton Road in San Antonio, Texas. And I gotta tell you, man, if you like ice cream or anything remotely related to it, you're gonna love this one. I guess it's okay, ice cream. It's got its good points. Look at that, that wonder underneath that hard exterior. <laughs> Through God knows what on top of it. And I got a cool color change spoon and whatnot. So you got brownies and gummy worms and almonds and bananas and, and kiwis. kiwis. In, and then somewhere in there is a little bit of a chocolate uh, whatchamadilly. And then also my friend told me about these fish eggs. I got the, um, I got the, uh, oh, no. Yeah, I got the green apple fish eggs. And, there, and there's a, uh, is there anything in the bottom of that cup? Uh, I'm looking for my dignity and my self-respect, <laughs> but I don't think I'm gonna fight again. <laughs> Not at the bottom of that cup. <laughs> no, there's a waffle cone down there. Yeah, there it's the chocolate waffle cone. Oh, you got the chocolate one? Yeah. Right on. That's who I am. Deep down inside, I'm a chocolate waffle cone. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's right. If you had to pick one song to listen to over the other one, would you rather listen to Don Henley's Dirty Laundry or Billy Idol's White Wedding? Dirty Laundry. Dirty Laundry? Is it the, uh, is it the words? Is it the music? It's the Henley voice. The, Hen the Henley voice. Yeah, I love me some... Uh, he's, so some Hen he's so Henley. So, he's a very Henley, <laughs> a very Henley man. <laughs> Right. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Okay. Um, yeah, 100%. Right okay, now. what, uh... Are you a keyboard fan? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I am. You like the, uh, uh the, the 80s, as far as, uh, it's, their, their well, instrumentation as far as like, and, their, and their mixing, like their style? Well, as far as, like, keyboard, like, are you as well as along with keyboard? Because, like, Type yeah. 1 Negative, they have a keyboard player who also plays organ, and that's, that's, that's amazing. That's my, some of my favorite jam like that, sessions. Do you like that or, 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 I like, orchestral I just like, like Typo Negative. Like all the Typo Negative stuff is just badass. But like they, they, that's how they developed and harnessed that like creepy Halloween sound. Like you could put on Oregon, any yeah. album and it just sounds like it's October. You know, like it's Halloween's the next day or it's coming up. You know, it's very ominous, very like awesome, beautiful music. So yeah, I absolutely. And, uh, and as I said with Yes, total pun intended, because Yes, Featured one of the best keyboard players to ever tickle the ivories, so to speak. You know the plastic yeah. ivories or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm big into keyboard, very much so. Very cool, very cool. I would have to go with. Uh, um, I would actually have to go with uh, the same, because on uh, both accounts, on both yeah, sessions. Uh, yeah, on both. Right I, and the reason Don't get me wrong, I like Idol. Right, the reason I brought this up is because I was... Because uh, you found a surgery. He's, no. he's developed the technology. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. I was scrolling through... Um, that was like an SNL this, skit where they implanted yeah, like um, your favorite song in your head and you heard it over and over and over again. Oh my god. And then that some people killed nice. themselves. It was either SNL or... Mad TV. I can't remember, but I think I think, that, I think Andy Richter was in the skit. They had a Star Trek episode like that too, where uh, Troy keeps keeps hearing that same um, kind of music box Are you talking jingle. The one head? where they meet the Dowd. I guess the survivors. The, yeah, uh, exactly. Season it's three, like, I think. It's, yeah, it's like an alien who lives on a planet by himself. Yeah, he's his, recreated his wife and his his house, and, and the whole planet's destroyed. Yeah, awesome episode. Yeah, yeah, and she and it, and it and it's like painful to the point it actually puts him into a coma because she's hearing the same song over and over again. Yeah, plus, that's right. Plus yeah, she so has like kind fix of a, her. That's well, right. Yeah, when well, she has like kind of a nightmare or two thing got uh, Picard's going on all intimidated. It. He's like, I can't. I, there's no 
like courts that can judge you like just go live on your planet dude we'll tell people to stay away from it yeah we'll set up a buoy you know a stay beacon. Away, stay away, stay away. they do that on uh, several episodes like, several of, oh the, remember that one where they went back and like they went back even though there was somebody had possessed troy and it's like what are you doing back here it's like we left clues behind you can't leave clues behind the plant had grown because they were out for like three or four days and uh people's uh uh, beards and stuff like that it, uh, didn't grow because they were shaved or whatever. Like everybody was, Worf's arm was broken and they reset the bone. Like it was a bunch of, I can't remember what season that was. It's uh, moist outside! Mmm, Like that's my Homer moment, you know? When you get moist? Moist. No, not when I get moist. When I talk about getting moist. So today, where are we? We're at Ray's Pizzeria. We're gonna try out uh, the Ray's Supreme. And we got the giant one, the really, really big pizza. We're gonna check it out. Sounds really, uh, it's really good. It's got uh, sausage, it's got peppers, it's got everything you want in pizza. Everything you want in pizza. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Adrian and Chris show, and this is Adrian, and I am Chris. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing pretty well, and I believe uh, my friend is doing well as well. Well, all's well that ends well. Now we've got uh, ominous much. Well, we've got a very uh, delicious pizza that we just got done eating, and um, I I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, what you thought about it, but um, I give it the Chris stamp. I really do. Like, like right on, bam, uh, five stars. How would you give it? How would you rate it? Um, but you're like, not a fan. Nothing against. But the pizza was delicious, but in my own personal opinion, like, if it's not a thick pizza... You're, are you, you a know. crust person? Like, do you like to eat the crust on the pizza? If or it's, um, if it's got a good enough flavor, I feel like a thinner pizza has a dried up crust versus, like, a thicker pizza has, um... Like, it doesn't even have to have cheese, or it doesn't even have to have, like, um, sauce or meat on it, but if it's got a good flavor, then a thicker crust will just be worth eating, because it's like a, almost like a delicious breadstick, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. But if there's no flavor, if there's no flavor in the dough at the end, then I don't want to eat it, you know? Like, I don't like flat pizzas with just, like, white, barren, you know, almost ashy crust. Like, some pizzas that you get, you know, they use a lot more flour, like, in the, when they're making the, uh, when they're flattening out the dough and everything, and that's where you get kind of that ashy type feeling like, um, for lack of a better word, really, um, it, yeah, it's basically ashy, but, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the New York styles are like that, like, um, when I've got, when I've gone up there, like, they, they make a lot, thin, pizza's thin, that's the, that's the New York style, and, um, it's more, about uh, the richness of the cheese and the sauce and you know the the toppings and it's not so much about uh, the bread and I mean they had you want like a nice crust on it but you don't really want uh, you know like a just a big hunk of um, bread 
with a little bit of toppings on it. Like they're they're more about the uh, um, uh, I don't know I don't know how you would really describe it, but the uh, but a lot of people um, eat the pizza. They fold it up almost like a taco. Like they kind of take their slice and like kind of fold it long uh, long ways. Yeah, I've seen that. And, and eat it like that. Um, that's a that's actually how I I eat the, at that pizza a lot. You know because otherwise like the end just kind of folds over. You know, but I like uh, but I like uh, I like that style, the ashy style. I I think it tastes good. Really? Yeah. The you know it's it's a very basic um, dough. And, and I like uh, the consistency of it. Like you kind of got to rip it a little bit, you know, to um, but not like too much to where it's like hurting your teeth or anything. But it's got like a it's got a nice rip to it, you know. It's just it's just the, uh, different uh, styles. Like a lot of times when you go to like a chain pizza place, like you get more of a it's more like bread. It's more like baked bread, really. But it's just there's something about a, a thicker pizza, a heartier pizza that. It's more enticing. This particular pizza, I felt, you know, it had flavor. It had a lot of flavor to it, and all the ingredients were very fresh. But that's, if if that's the case, then I want more of it compact in. You know what I'm saying? Like you would probably like, a, I think, Stromboli's too. Stromboli's are kind of, it's kind of like the calzone, but they're they're just packed with meat and uh, cheese and you know some sauce and peppers and everything. It's and it's real thick, like. Um, like it's a very hearty um, meal, you know, and it's kind of like uh, like if you were to take you know this uh, thin crust type pizza and, and throw it against the wall, and and, uh, and uh, it's almost like if you were to like roll it up, roll it up, and smoke you know, it. And uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, for all you pizza smokers out there, yeah, I mean, if you want to get the barbecue grill out, you probably could smoke it. Pizza, in my personal opinion, like give me like a Chicago style, like a thick, deep crust, deep crust, deep uh, dish. You know what I'm saying? And I also am very much into, like, a, give me a stuffed crust. Give me cheese in the crust. Give me meat in the crust. Give me, like, fill it up. Make it more of, a like, a real pie. Like, that's that's what I really go for. Like, that's my favorite. Like, any Chicago-style pizza, that's the kind of pizza I want inside my body in the worst way. And the best way. But, so you're so you're more of a deep dish fan. Um, 100%. 100%. How do you feel about, like, Sicilian? Like, where it's just, like... I don't know any Sicilians. Well, I've never met a Sicilian. And I don't want to anger any Sicilians. Yeah. So there we go. Well, that sound, sounds smart. But as far as, like, having, like, a really thick crust. You know, you ever seen, like, the square pizzas that have, like, a really thick crust? Um, and then they have, you know, the regular toppings on top. That's a Sicilian-style pizza. Oh, okay. And, um, I thought you were talking about the people. No, no, it's not like a, it's not like a certain brand of ingredients that you use. It's more like a, um, just the fact that it's square and it has like a really thick crust. Like it's a, it's a carb loader. Like uh, if you're gonna be, uh, you know, doing a lot of physical activity and you want to load up, that's one way to do it. Is grab yourself a Sicilian pizza, you know, or a Sicilian woman. Um, actually, would probably burn more carbs that way, you know, because she'll slap you and you'll start running away. But, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What are we doing here? What are we, what are we doing here? What is, what is going on? <laughs> this is Adrian and Chris, episode six. Today uh, of all days, today of all days, <laughs> to end all days. <laughs> we didn't mean to make it grim, no. uh, but today of all days, we had raised pizza. And then we came to terms with um, each other's pizza decisions. I guess. I think so. Somebody likes a thin crust, and somebody likes a real pizza with a nice thick crust. Wow, not real pizza, huh? That was a lot less than three stars then. Yeah, I was look, like, I was trying to be polite. But, oh, um, okay, okay. That's cool. This guy likes an ashy pizza. I think that's a sin. Just like eating in front of people, it's a sin. That's why there's nobody on the other side of the table at the Last Supper. You just like go huddle in a corner and eat. Like, well, no, they were eating, but there was nobody in front of them, and they weren't like looking at each other. They were just all secretive. So <laughs> it's a sin to, for somebody to look at you while you're eating. It's wrong. Oh, well. It's not. Some people are just... It some is, people, some people just 
are uncomfortable about it. Look, I am, okay? What was your favorite video game when you were a kid? Like, what was like? What was the one you feel like you played the most? Um, I think I played. Well, there's two really. I played uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, and um, uh, the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I like really like the Ninja Turtle game on uh, Sega Genesis, because um, that one uh, it was like an arcade style where you could just keep playing and playing and playing, and you know they didn't have a lot of interjections with story and Did whatnot. you ever play the Ninja Turtles arcade game? Yeah. Yeah. It was that's basically what it was, but you know, in like a home edition you didn't have to keep putting quarters in it. And this is on Sega? Which uh, Sonic was it? Sonic Was um, it the first one? Was no, I think Sonic the one 3? I I think the one I played the most was Sonic Two. With Tails. Yeah, with Tails. Yeah, that was uh and I remember uh, a lot of my friends had uh the Sega Game Gear. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they'd, I, I and, they'd, and they'd bring it to school and stuff, and I, I would get to play it. You know, it was it was fun. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think the last game system I had was like a PS2, and then you know I just haven't gotten into it since. It's not something that uh, is interesting to me anymore. Like I'm not really interested in gaming. So, but I think. Uh, but I do like playing arcade games every every once in a blue moon, you know, if the mood sh strikes me, you know, I'll go play, I'll go drive, uh, drive like a car game, you know, like Cruising World or something, you know, or play like a, like a Terminator, Terminator game, you know, where you just go through and, you know, you kill all the bad robots <laughs> and stuff like that. Random question, um, if you found out that, exactly, if cockroaches produced milk that was five times as nutritious as regular milk, because I know you're a big chocolate milk fan. Are you trying to ruin milk for me? No, I'm just saying, like, if cockroaches produced milk that was, like, five times as nutritious would you drink it? No. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I that's what I thought. Because what um, the? because people are actually doing that now. Like it's uh yeah, apparently cockroaches can produce some kind of milk that is very nutritious, but some people are off put by it because of the fact that it comes from cockroaches. Yeah, those are people who eat cockroaches, yeah. Yeah. But no. No. I no. I, I wouldn't either. <laughs> this is very unexpected, folks. <laughs> I am legitimately shocked. Wow, Adrian's shocked. That is a new one on me. I have very few favorite things in this world, sir. Random, I said no. <laughs> random question. Random question. What um, what would you prefer and or... Well, I guess what would you... Do you prefer cats or do you prefer dogs? Or do you like both? Both. Oh. And uh, so... Okay, so now, um, random question. Skittles or sweet tarts? <laughs> I need a minute. Kind of like uh, walking in, and there's just it's a family candy store. All the kinds of not like, an adult candy store. I don't think I've ever been to an adult candy store. I've been on a field trip, but I don't think uh, you know to the adult megaplex. But I don't think I've ever been to like an adult candy store. What do they have like like gummy boobies or something or like yeah what, various yeah. gummy products? But that's not what we're here to talk about. Oh okay. So what are we here to talk about? 
Um, oh, that's right, the thing I was talking about. Yeah, that's right, Darth Maul's in the new Han Solo movie. Dude. I feel like uh, anybody that gets chopped in half, I mean, I feel like you're dead. This is pre-chop half. Oh, this is pre-chop half? Oh, okay, I was going to say. But he does come out in another Star Wars bit where, you know, he's not chopped in half anymore. And yeah, no, he gets, like, robotic legs or whatever. Oh, it's Rebels, I think. That he, and then, like I said, he meets up with Obi-Wan. But and I then feel Obi-Wan like they cut him, him like, right through the gut. Like, right under the rib. Yeah, but it was, like, cauterized. Like, you know. I don't know. If you cauterize the bottom half of my torso, I'm You don't think you sure. can take that? You're not tough enough to take that? No. I don't Come think on. I, Who isn't tough enough I, to take that? I am. My body's not. <laughs> <laughs> like mentally I can yeah physically, mentally I can handle physically, it physically I'm not sure if I can yeah wow I, I just feel like the fact that what happened to him lightsaber yeah he just got disemboweled and among other well, things well Anakin had his cut, cut arms his and legs spine. cut off and anyway yeah but those are arms and legs that's not the torso but Darth Maul's Amelia Clark's boss at some point like you'll yeah but like, Amelia like hashtag me too type boss yeah like he's, he's very creepy or uh whatever. kind of yeah. Yeah. Oh, is he like uh, uh, is he is he is he like a younger Darth Darth Maul? Like, I mean, does he look younger or does he look pretty much the same? From what I well, I haven't. Does seen he have it. that boyish look? He's got his <laughs> he's got his Darth Maul boyish charm. Yes, he does. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. And like I said, Lando. So he only has like two horns as opposed to like you know seven. You, I think he you're picturing got all his horns you're picturing yet. like a like a mid pubescent. <laughs> <laughs> Darth Maul, which, sir, I think you're just now mocking me. Um, however, well, because well, because you keep trying to tell me about a movie I haven't seen yet, so it's kind of. I haven't seen it either, so. Yeah, but you watch and find out everything about the movie before you go see it. Look, if somebody knows something, I want to know it too. Simple as that. It's hard to argue with that logic, but you know, with for me with movies, like I I like to go for in me with a movie. Fresh. I like it to go in the fresh, very fresh. That's why you shower. Mind you. Vi- like, vigorously scrub yourself down before you go to a movie. Well, not like, I don't want to rip my flesh off, but I want to look But good. you did at one point. I think when we went to we go see Power Rangers. We went to go see Power Rangers, you're just like, I got to take another hot shower. Oh, go Power Rangers. Oh, I got to look so good for the pink one. That was an awesome <laughs> movie. Yeah, I missed that movie. You miss it. I, like went, a, like I wish it a friend was, that moved away. Yeah, I, I wish, missed that. I movie. wish it was still in theaters. If you bought it, you could watch it. I know. But anyway, I need to buy the Deadpool. You're movie watching too. a terrible. You're gonna watch a terrible movie. Really? You I'm, think so? I so think how did so. you feel about Rogue One? Uh, there were parts of it that I liked very much. There were there were elements of it that I thought were awesome. So what did you think of the movie as a whole? Um, as a Star Wars whole. Um, I um, a standalone whole. Well, look, I'll put it like this. My favorite one is Empire Strikes Back, without a doubt. And then my second favorite is Star Wars. And then I would put Rogue One ahead of Return of the Jedi. Okay. And would you put it ahead of Episode 3? Oh, those. Well... (laughs) Oh, (laughs) man. (laughs) You made it sound like uh, we brought up, like, somebody's name we weren't supposed to mention anymore or something. Somebody we excommunicated from our lives in Texas and everything. Like, no, we don't talk about them. They live behind a target somewhere in a dumpster. Um, so one of us saw, that was my shoulder, one of us saw... Damn. <laughs> you were fucking serious about that. You know, like a guy when he like snaps his neck this way and snaps his neck that way right before he's about to fight. <laughs> I'm telling you folks yeah. <laughs> that this guy right here saw Han Solo and I am not happy about that. No, I Look, can't. it's I I haven't seen it yet, but that's not you know, that's kinda of the way the yeah, show works. I've seen, there's I mean, so many there's so many things to see out there. There's so many other things that I better watch first that are better. Wow, um, and this guy's a Star Wars fan. Just let you, that's I, why he's wearing a Beatles I grew, shirt. I grew up wor- uh, watching Star Wars, man. Um, uh, 
the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and A New Hope. Not okay, ne okay, not, so let's, let's, not necessarily in that order. No, 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 no. What I'd like but to I've do. I've been a huge fan for a long after time. Your, after your solo review, what I'd like to do is rank. Uh, you rank, in your opinion, all of the films, mm -hmm. and then I'll rank all of my like top, and then we'll compare. Okay. You know? And if we have right. to pause. To get a refill on our drink, or to um, write it out because that's, write a lot it out. Of, that's a lot of movies. If we actually put some thought and effort into this, um, <laughs> you just might get just a like good episode. Yeah. No, well, I mean, this is this is the show. about time we start doing that because it's about time and it's about space it's about <laughs> love that show the book of love that is not oh wow that, that is a good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no i like uh that's, see but that see that's the wavelength we're on but i'm, we're, I'm but thinking we're of a sci-fi show he's thinking of a song well we're trying to get to i mean we're at a point we're not trying to get to a point we're at a point now with star wars i think where it's almost an impasse you would say i don't know i don't know like i just Do you feel like we need to we need to we need to think about where this is going. You know, are we just gonna? Are we gonna accept this? Yeah. They guess like, got no choice. <laughs> They're gonna keep making these movies. I know, but come on, man. Give me at least one good one out of three. You know, one really. Do you good feel like one it, it's three. just like the market's flooded now? Do you feel like? I think I feel like like there's two, um, it's a there's surplus. So many, there's just... so many people that like Star Wars. They will buy anything Star Wars. They will buy a mop bucket just because it has a Darth Vader helmet on it. Like Oh, and then you when know. you squish the mop, it goes <sighs> That would be cool. That would I would exactly, not buy right? that, but I would think that would be cool. I would like that on Instagram. I'd be like, that's a double click right there. Yeah. So I mean like people will buy anything Star Wars, so they will see any movie, no matter how bad it is, just because it's Star Wars. Seriously. Just because it's a Star Wars. It, yeah, I like it a Star Wars. You know, I've liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I, I like it. I like it a Star Wars. <laughs> he likes it a Star Wars. He likes it a Star so, Wars almost more than the media. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, especially so. especially now. But we both um, grew up with Star Wars. Like it's it's a indeed. big part of our lives. So I wouldn't say it was a big part of our lives, but like I would say that I watched it. A lot. It doesn't. It's, it doesn't it's a big like. Part of my it doesn't. Life. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't like take over my existence. I was physically but, hurt. You know. Physically hurt because of Star Wars. Oh. Also, my buddy doesn't know how to knock on doors. Now that is n simply not true because I knocked <laughs> like I always do, and you just light as a feather, and you stiff as a board. You just didn't hear me. I don't know how you don't. Y'all hear that? I I, I know. Uh, I, oh, I gotta look this up because I gotta know these people's names because otherwise, this thing is just gonna go. Uh, north, south, east, and west. And I'm thinking that, uh, I don't... Okay, that's the one I really want to remember. Paul Bettany. Vision? From the Avengers? Yeah, but he was the, he was the bad guy. Vision's not a bad guy. No, but the 
actor plays up people other than Vision because... Because he's a jerk. Because he's... Well, no, because he's an actor and he's really good like that. He plays like uh, one of the upper mid-level um, bad guys in this crime upper scene. Mid <laughs> upper mid-level? Upper mid-level. Yeah, upper uh, mid-level management. Bad, yeah, exactly. In this crime syndicate. And, um, in this crime syndicate, we call up. <laughs> yeah, we've got, uh, wasn't that your high school band name? The crime, crime syndicate. syndicate called Love? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Yeah. Oh, what a name. They, they, what a time to be alive. It, it's, what is it? How does that song go? It's the thing called Crime Syndicate of Love. Like you could probably like basically. The Crime Syndicate's also the series of comics. Like oh really? I didn't yeah, know that. I have some Crime Syndicate comics at my house. Oh wow! I'll turn them on to those. Oh, love. Sure. No, there's no, that's <laughs> different. These there's are, these very are pretty rowdy. little love. These are rowdy very comics. They're love. awesome. That's uh, Han Solo would probably knock a lot louder. Would would be played by somebody. <laughs> What did you think? So, so okay, so let's start off with that. Okay, first things first. Han Solo. What did you think about Han Solo? Um, I thought the character um, was a good. Like uh, the, I think what was written was decent for Han Solo's part. I wasn't really crazy about the guy who um, was acting as Han Solo. His uh, acting what's skills, his name? Uh, uh, his name is. We Alden. got a computer this time uh, in the form his of his phone. Is, his name is Alden. Er uh. Aaron Reich? I believe that's, Aaron Reich? I believe that's pronounced Ulbreich. Ulbreich? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure uh, how to pronounce his name, but... Um, yeah, Aaron Ulbreich. He had some mo some moments where, you know, he kind of had that young, uh, edgy kind of Han Solo feel. Kind of feel. edge. Yeah, kind of feel. Did you but, buy him being but a kid then, from the streets? But then, uh, no, I didn't. He didn't seem uh, to have that he, like, kid from the like sometimes he was kind of it was almost like uh, he was kind of in and out of his character and like I think some of it was just him you know it wasn't Han Solo you know I didn't really I didn't buy him as Han Solo I'll put it that way right on um, it, all, overall um, damn he had some he had some funny lines you know it was um, you know very uh, it seemed like he was quick witted you know because um, I mean that's how he was written you know but. I just didn't think, I just didn't, I wasn't really impressed with his acting chops. Or was it like character. fill in the blank wit where it's like, oh, and now here's where a, you know, clever remark would come in and he has something or somebody else tops no, him. Like, no, it was. It, well, okay. Um, it, was, it, was, it, it, it flowed, you know, if, a little bit. It wasn't so cookie cutter like that, you know. Um, if you uh, were to see this um, Han Solo show up in another movie, like if they were to do a Boba Fett movie. Would you be cool with him being like? Would you watch another movie with this guy playing Han Solo? Um, that depends. Like but if they did but Han Solo saw, too, what if, if they did like a Han Solo too, like a sequel? Would you watch the no, sequel? No, no, I wouldn't watch the wow. sequel. But um, I did think uh, Amelia Clark. Um, she's so gorgeous. If, if we're talking she's about so a, a, acting, Amelia Clark was good. Of course, Woody Harrelson. I. He, he's great. He's great no matter what he does, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. He can um, do I've no never wrong. seen him do, like, a bad acting job ever. No, he's badass. Like, you know, um, from Cheers all the way on up. Like, I, I love, I love I Woody Harrelson. I love Mr. Peterson. <laughs> 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 yeah. he, he was, he was a, a sharp cookie in that show. Still it. She still yeah. it. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, like, the character was, the character written, was, yeah. was written that way, that he was a dumb, like, blonde guy, and then he yes. was very quick with the wit, like, always, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I That's think, right. I, the, like other, the other one is, uh, Donald, uh, Donald Glover playing, Danny Glover. Glover. no, no, Danny <laughs> Glover was sitting on a toilet seat in Lethal Weapon and Mel Gibson had to pull him off and put, throw a mattress on, a, on themselves so that, you know, they could explode the bomb. I just like bringing up Danny Glover whenever yeah. I can because he's awesome. Yeah, I love, I love Danny Glover, but Donald Glover, um, I thought he could, did a good job as, uh, <laughs> The young man's. Danny Glover. Young man. Yeah. Young Donald man. Donald Glover. Young his, I've seen his stand-up, you know. And you've um, seen him sit down. And he, I've seen... <laughs> Every time he was on, what was that show, Community or whatever? Yeah, I, I didn't see uh, any of that. Uh, I just saw the stand-up. And he had, like, Spider-Man pajamas on. Yeah. Spider-Man under rouge or he, something like that. But, like, you're a grown man. <laughs> but he does seem like he likes comic books a lot. Yeah, he, he was in the Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. He, uh... He, was, he has the power. Like the character of the prowler. Who's okay. the so, guess, so, guess, so they're Morales. saying they're saying hit or miss. 
in the portrayal. Well, from the two sources that I got again that gave me this information, you know, it's it's fair. Like it's it's okay, but it's not amazing. It's not like yeah, it's not. There's a lot of like meaning. There's a lot of life that gets taken that isn't as affected as you thought it would be. Like lives get human life doesn't seem to matter as much. And when somebody dies, it's like oh, moving on. Oh wow. So well, yeah. I mean, Woody Harrelson's in there, and there's a point where, well, well, when you watch it, then we can talk. But I'm not gonna watch it. I'm not a Star Wars fan as much anymore. Like they burned me with you the know, last one. Yeah. The uh, the whole uh, Kylo Ren thing and killing off. Well, no, Luke. I mean that that yeah, like Force Awakens and um, Last Jedi. Like they both kind of like it's both like they're big. I feel like one's the left hand and one's the right hand, and they're both middle fingers to the. the the, the Star Wars audience? To the Star Wars fans who wanted, you know, to see the Luke and Leia thing. and Han. Well, not the same thing, but wanted to see the continuation, the continuation of the story. Yeah. Like, that was, that's what I wanted most of all, was the continuation. Like, I'm a, Luke Skywalker is my favorite character. Like, well, that's, that's, that's what the Star Wars trilogy has always followed, was the now Skywalker line. Ryan Johnson and whatnot, messing it up and doing whatever. I don't, anyway, I know that this is, wasn't his, there was, there was, two other guys that directed this that aren't worth mentioning because it's terrible but um yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't know I'm still open minded you know if, it, if they can give me at least a good one timer you know I feel like I've paid you know paid for my ticket but. paid for my ticket yeah no okay <laughs> we'll have to do a little post review and uh, we can talk a little bit more in depth and see you know compare notes yeah and you'll see, see you'll see how little Darth Maul. And we'll see how there. and we'll see how good their ice cream is. <laughs> Star Wars ice cream. Yeah, imagine um, the the ice cream. Like if you were a rebel in Star Wars, like what kind of ice cream do you think you would be making? Dots. Dots. The dipping dots. Dipping dots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dots for sure. One hundred percent. We were trying to keep warm. Picture so dots. So we in. made this ice cream. <laughs> Fix your dots in the Star Wars universe. It would work. Yeah, I dots. think so. <laughs> all the Imperial dots, are, they're all gray. <laughs> <laughs> gray eyes. And, and the Rebels are all like kind of orangey. What <laughs> flavor is this? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. I really liked, uh, I, I liked his performance. I thought he was good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was telling you that Lando wasn't really getting his you know, do proper or whatever. How'd you feel? Um, How about the relationship I, I between like, Lando and that robot? A little um, weird. Then she gets up and the Millennium Falcon. It was yeah, a little weird, a little creepy. It was it was a little weird, yeah, but right. I I could go with it. You know, I You're down for some robot action? I mean I didn't uh, I mean it's not something that I feel like I would be into. You're not but against it, I'm not you gonna, support it, but I'm, I mean as long as it's consensual I mean, I think people should be It seemed like it was it. more than consensual. There was some yeah. back and forth flirtation from the clips that I've seen. Yeah. It was like, is he fucking that robot? Like, she, like, she, <laughs> she was like a, like a sassy like type yeah, robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then, but she gets uploaded into the Falcon and then like we lose that personality somehow. Like, the personality's gone, but you get the, up, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Bettany played excellent, excellent um, upper mid-level, upper mid-level crime boss. And, uh, did a uh, did an excellent acting job. Um, the movie overall, I w it was okay. Um, I think I asked you about Darth Maul. What did you think about Darth Maul? Did he seem kind of rapey? I mean, not rapey, but like kind of uh, sexually assaulty. I I I wouldn't want to. We're gonna be spending some Claire's time together, and with my lightsaber. I, if you don't do what I say, I'll lightsaber your clothes off. I, I don't think there is any real reason for him to be in the movie. I or like for him was, to show his lightsaber? I think it was for Sir, put that away. Sir, you're like you're like light, thousands of light years away shaking your lightsaber. Yeah, like, I was waiting for him to like, lick his lips how and lame, he's like... How lame is that? Hello, Clarice. You know, something like... Wow. Just very weird. Very I, I, That's I not that like, character, I felt, I felt like, yeah, Darth Maul is... No, he he's a very at least from what I've this seen. Is like the most, I think he spoke him, more in this movie than he had he, in fucking episode one. He was he was more of a stealthy like almost like a ninja, 
Like that's kind of the vibe that I, I got. Feel like from a him. ninja. Yeah. All thoughts to yourself. All kung fu fighting. No, 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 no. You know, feel like a number ninja with. Uh, oh yeah. Feel yeah. like a ninja. Yeah. Now, I didn't. I I just felt like his the, his whole his hole. You could see it. Um. Fortunately, I could, like Anne Hesha's hole in Psycho. I had to see it. I had to see his hole. I, it was forced upon me. They 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 shoved Darth Maul in there. Like like there was no wedged him right. There in was there. no reason for him to be in that movie. They just needed a familiar character to throw in there or something. I guess I don't know. Maybe that's what their thinking was, but I don't know why they did it. Mm, I'm trying to remember what. Uh... I, w- I, I I wouldn't um, want to see Darth Maul in anything unless he's going to end up fighting. Except the two-piece. Unless he's going to end up fighting. (laughs) (laughs) Never going to give you up, never going to let you down. (laughs) (laughs) 80s music. <laughs> no, I, 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 if I no, see we'll Darth never Maul, give you up, folks. We're if I see, if I see Darth Maul, up. I want to see him fighting. I don't want to see From him. Behind. I don't want to see him shaking his little fist, you know, halfway across the galaxy at me and pointing his finger. Did you, you know? shake his finger? Point his finger? No, but that's that's kind of the idea. <laughs> I don't remember seeing that in that clip. I just saw him. No, he doesn't literally do that, but it's kind of that figure. No, but he does face. turn his lightsaber on. Yeah, he does literally this turn his my, lightsaber. This is my glow in the dark wiener. Yeah, and if you see, you like it, it, it's you're like gonna see it. Star Wars. Who uh, likes Star, Star Wars? Wars. Yeah, Jazz yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you want uh, to go first with your list? We're doing a list of the top ten Star Wars movies. There's only ten. And what basically? We're not counting the, the holiday special or any animated stuff. What's the, yeah? What's the what, uh, live action Star Wars movies? What is your top ten? Uh, starting with the best, the one you like the most, all the way down. Okay. So, number one on my list is The Empire Strikes Back. Number two, second one, Star Wars, A New Hope. Number three, we've got Rogue One. Love that lightsaber scene with Darth Vader. That's that, and then Miss uh, Black Cat herself, Felicia Hardy. What's her name? What's her name in the movie? Mm, can't remember. Oh, damn it. Where's, your, where's the internet now when we need it? Anyway. And, um, what, uh, what, and the, what about the droid? Was it jump? The droid, uh, uh, possibly. Um, <laughs> well, like, you're like, still not sure. Like, K, uh, uh, K2SO. I, li- I really liked that droid. Yeah. He, he was a really cool character. That's the cat from Serenity. Uh, Alan Judic. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Um, okay, so, and so... number four... Number four is um, Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's got some good stuff in there. But the reconciliation of, you know, father and son, I thought, was pretty uh, cool. And... and uh, and just seeing Luke get, get this blast I like it. I like, I like all of that. I like all of that, but the thing that... That was my favorite part the of that The thing that movie. turns me off on that movie is the Ewoks. Like, like I, don't, I don't dig that... Yeah, see, your cat agrees with me. Like, I don't dig that very much at all. Like, I feel like that's too soft. That's too childy. You know, A like, bunch of teddy bears taking over the... Yeah, people, like, Beating out a bunch of stormtroopers. Yeah, I didn't... Guns, mean, highly trained military... Personnel. I just, I didn't like with that. rocks. Yeah, I really <laughs> didn't like that. And their helmets, their drums at the end, like, like that. it's adorable, but it's, but there's some badass dark Luke stuff. Well, I mean, when I was a kid, it seemed reasonable to me. You're like, of course, teddy bears, am I right? Yeah. Like I could have teddy like, bear. I would have pictured like them just blowing those things to just fur everywhere, you know? Yeah, he, they would have annihilated them. Just like a laser like, beam like an overwhelming versus... force, you know what I'm saying? Not, laser not like eight dudes on speeders. Yeah. But okay, so five, episode three. 
uh, Revenge of the Sith. Oh, okay. That one hits the five point, the halfway point. And that one, I mean... So it's, even with all the Ewoks, you still put that one ahead of episode Yeah, because it's got more Luke Skywalker in it. And Luke oh, Skywalker yeah. is, he's the reason I'm watching this shit. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm a huge uh, Luke fan as well. And cre uh, great, great um, bloodline. Very interesting bloodline that that guy has, you know. Um, yeah, she is. Yeah, she, yeah. Uh, okay, so number six. Boop. Number six, uh, The Force Awakens. Because there are elements of that that I really, really liked. Like, I really liked Kylo Ren fucking getting pissed off and taking it out on a console. I really liked that. Like, I felt very... Um, Justified all those times that I lost my shit and maybe put my hand through a window or whatever. Yeah. It made me feel justified because sometimes you Something just, you could relate to. Yeah, man. Because sometimes you get so off fucking you. pissed off that if you had a lightsaber, maybe you would destroy part of your house because you're so goddamn pissed off. You're like, I wanted a fucking door here anyway. You know, <laughs> but um, he goes to town like, and then right after he's like, right after he loses his shit, he's like, was there anything else? <laughs> the guard's like, nah, it's, we're good. I, yeah, I did. As if you have to ask. Fucking love, love, <laughs> love ask. there's bits and pieces of that movie. That anything else you want to tell me right now? <laughs> um, but that character, that was from Force Awakens anyway, that character does some, there's some dynamics that I thought they were badass. Um... Honestly, like, there are visual elements of it that I really liked, you know, that, yeah, it, like, seeing Kylo Ren, like, freeze a fucking laser bolt blast mid-shot, you know? Yeah, like, that was pretty cool. And then seeing, um, uh, the Millennium Falcon just, like, do all kinds of shit that you've never seen it do before, that was awesome. Um, and then I like that there's a lot more lightsaber stuff, like, I'm... Big into lightsaber action, you know? Like Yeah, definitely. I don't know why there isn't more lightsaber stuff. Like why why can't they have another form of that? Like you were saying Paul Bettany has like a little hand version, right? Like mm -hmm. not a little hand version. <laughs> it's a little hand. <laughs> but like like Deadpool, this is my baby hand. Oh creepy, yeah. <laughs> but no, um have you anyway, um uh so anyway, Force Awakens, that one's awesome. Um seven. Episode one, because of the fight at the end, that's the only reason. That fight. Oh, with Dark Maul. Yeah, that. Dark Maul gets cut in half by Obi Wan. Yes, that fight. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that one goes on for quite a while too. That's the like that's that's a good damn that's a damn good fight. Liam Neeson. Hmm. Make me like the Last Jedi because knowing that character and how angry he gets and how quick he is when Luke fucking comes down on him with a lightsaber. And, like, Kylo Ren's like, holy shit, like, he turns it on right above his head. Like, that's not something you just accidentally turn on by somebody. Like, oops, sorry, I was turning it off. I thought it was my flashlight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah, you were sleeping, and, you know, thought it was my flashlight. Big mistake, but, yeah. Yeah, no, it's... I felt like maybe Luke would respond like that, you know? I mean, maybe he saw a threat, and... I don't know, I... I wanted to explore that story, but unfortunately, you know... Somebody destroyed it. You know, and it's not about, like, hating on Ryan Johnson or Kathleen Kennedy or whatever. It's not about hating on them specifically, or even the actors. It, There's it, a lot it, of hate. It's, it's, it's not so much hate for me. It's just disappointment. Like, yeah. You had, you had a really good story going. And then what happened? It just fizzled out. Yeah. Like, you, you just totally went back and just destroyed the plot line that you were building on. But if we're going to talk the about terrible movie. stories, I mean, uh, number nine on my list is episode two. Number eight was Last Jedi. Number nine is episode two. It's a terrible movie. It is garbage. Garbage. It is a garbage movie. There, I feel like there are no redeeming qualities. Like the way uh, episode one has the fight at the end, I feel like episode two has no redeeming factors that make it like, worth popping in. What? Every time I watched that at home, I'd say I probably had the commentary on, and I was like cleaning my house. Oh, not even pay attention. Yeah, like it was, it was so difficult for me to get into any of that <laughs> shit. And um, I tried though. I mean, I saw those movies in theaters. You know, I, I tried to, I tried to like them 
I want I convinced myself that they were good for a while. I think a lot of people are doing that. And then like Wars. now, once I saw Force Awakens, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. These movies are terrible. This is amazing. You know, like this is what it could be. Yeah. And then the story goes a little bit what? You know, like you're killing who? <laughs> like the two deaths that happened in these last two movies, it's got everybody in an uproar. You know. Yeah. See, even the cats agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's not happy about it. Mm -mm. And so leading up to my 10th and final one, uh, Solo, because I haven't seen it yet, and I don't got really an urge to see it. I mean, maybe one day when it's free, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, Chris, would you lay upon us the story of your list? My Present. List. My list. Last interruption. Of, uh, what was the list of again? The, um, the War, oh, Star Trek movies. The War of Stars. Uh, I've got a, uh, an interesting list. Um, okay. at least, I think, I think, the first and foremost best movie in, uh, that Star Wars produced was, um, Revenge of the Sith. That's my personal opinion. Some people, not so much. But I really like the fact that, uh, well, because growing up, you know, the whole uh, Star Wars saga got all wrapped together in that uh, one movie. They tied everything together, you know. A lot of Vader's transition. Um, <laughs> Into <one>. becoming a Vader. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's being his true self. <laughs> and uh, when you love some Vader. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. When a man loves, loves the somebody. emperor, <laughs> he'll breathe through some kind of apparatus. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, his wife died. You know, you know that old he, thing. Kill, he, he kills off, you know, the Jedi. So many children. Some, and je grown Jedi people. Is that what you like about it? And, no, it was just not all he likes. <laughs> well, I also liked uh, the the, the, tra the tragedy of it all. It's a it's a great tragedy oh, movie. so tragic. <laughs> exactly it. This is exactly what happened. And get back here. <laughs> oh, he said get back here. I'm doing this for my wife. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> it's just like in Breaking Back. I'm doing this for my family. <laughs> it's like, come on, no, you're not. You're doing it for yourself. <laughs> so while like, all the bees would just start following, I'm like, hey, this guy's going on. Right? Follow this guy. Just oh, he's going into the lava. Like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Look at him crawl. Look, I'm just gonna go back to the hive and smoke some honey, man. Like, <laughs> let's, let's get, let's get For out of here. For all you this honey guy, smokers out there. This guy's nuts. So, so, first Star Wars movie, my favorite is Revenge of the Sith. I really liked um, uh, the whole story. Um, the For me, you know, from seeing Star Wars from the very beginning, I, and I mean 4, 5, and 6, and then 1, 2, and then when 3 came out, it, it just put the whole saga together in a really good way. And I like the way that it did it. And you like I like children get all uh, it was it was kind of essential to his character, I think. Um, you know, just He's like just, it's in the script, kids. Well he well it's, he didn't kill just kids. He killed like What was it Order sixty six? Uh, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Where I think I think it's what it yeah. Was. Where all the we don't have the storm, internet, so we're all the storm, look it up. Where all the stormtroopers, you know, yeah. just go and one day we'll have the internet and we can look. They kill up. all the good people, man. Everything good. Yeah. Every, every, Sam pretty Jackson. Much, pretty much everybody. Oh wait, no, he wasn't guys. a good person. Well, <laughs> he is a good character. Um, I don't know him personally, but uh, his uh, yeah, Mace Windu. He he was trying he was to. Awesome. He, Mace Windu was trying to stop uh, the, the Emperor. You know who needed a lightsaber? Over. Jimmy Smith. And <laughs> <laughs> he needed a lightsaber, man. <laughs> you know, is, is, isn't that the reporter from uh, from Superman? Jimmy, Jimmy Smith. Smith. That's Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy Olsen, that's right. He gets shot in the head in fucking Zack Snyder's version. The, uh, Batman v Superman. Yeah. To like, who are you again? Bam. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. That was that. That was t that was tough. Um. 
We'll talk about we're it. Not, yeah, we'll another time. time. But so, I re- but I really Revenge uh, of the Sith is your number one yeah. overall. That is your favorite. That's your go-to Star Wars. I was about to say Trek. Star Wars movie. Yeah, that's my number one go-to. I think. Yeah. Like the way mine is Empire. Sure. Right. Yeah. On. Now number two for me is Empire. Yeah. I. I. I it's. It's. There. It's kind of a toss-up, but I think Revenge is just a hair, a step above. Just a step above, in my opinion. I think. It's all about murder and Jedi. Well, uh, and it and it also has that anti-establishment uh, to it. It's got a love story in there. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of elements in that movie, and it's got a lot of really good special effects. A lot of lightsaber fights, um, just uh, betrayal. Like this is so many things that uh, I, th- I thought. You were the great chosen movie. one. Yeah. Dubna. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna hack off your legs. I was chosen to do this. That's basically Get my legs hacked off. And well, then you know, lightsaber him. And lightsaber me, motherfucker. I dare you. Burn my face. You know. I think that... Uh, <laughs> with lava. Yeah, burn me with lava. You know, that way I can get even angrier. But that movie's got that horrible... No! It, it was... God. It was... It was, it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. No. And, uh, so number three. So number three is A New Hope. Um, is A New, first a new Hope what? Uh, this, the first Star Wars movie. Oh. Star Wars. I really liked uh, the Carrie Fisher. As a kid, I imagined myself as like Luke Skywalker and like learning to fight, you know, with Foo Fighter style. With the learning light. to fight again. I can see somebody teaching me. Run and tell all of the Jedi, I'm coming back for you. I'm gonna wear a robe and look like a ghost. What was your favorite, what's your favorite part of Star Wars, uh, I uh, hope? Um, hmm, I think, uh, I think it was when uh, Obi-Wan uh, confronts uh, Vader. I really liked, uh... He's like, you, and Vader's like, bitch, you cut off my fucking arms and legs, you dickhole. Basically, yeah. Um, that for the first time in the last and you, time, and you could tell, and you could tell that you know there's a lot of history between those two characters. When yeah, but Vader's like, no, came, like, I, yeah, I can't, uh, you know. And uh, I also liked, uh, I, I always liked Han Solo's character. Like he, was, yeah, uh, he's a pretty great. Yeah, I, I really. Everybody liked, loves the smuggler. You know. Yeah, he was. Um, he was really cool. Uh, it sounds like movie. a country song that I guess. I haven't heard yet. Everybody loves a smuggler. I love to say snuggler. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's the for her version. <laughs> snug her. Now, um, four. Retu- and then number four, Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked uh, the culmination of... Uh, Look at all this culmination. <laughs> Everywhere. It's everywhere. It's all over these teddy bears. Look, we're <laughs> rotten with it. <laughs> we're riddled with it. <laughs> Now I really uh no I really liked uh, the the emperor the, the dude was fucking scary man and he uh and how manipulative he was how he was playing you know a father against the son and that whole dynamic I thought was really cool and I'm a big fan of the death star and the the power of that and uh that's the power get, of the death star <laughs> getting taken down again that was re- that was really cool to watch um I uh getting taken down again <laughs> What it does best. <laughs> number five is Rogue One. Right on. Awesome movie. I, I, I really enjoyed that movie. It was a great standalone Star Wars story. Standalone whole. Yeah, and uh, the uh, it had a, had a certain grittiness to it that was really uh, As really the French exciting. say, a certain grittiness. Yes. <laughs> I, je ne sais grit. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I uh, oh, we we great. We we smell my armpit. Now, <laughs> number six, uh, Force Awakens. Um, that I really liked uh, where that story was going. Um, I really liked uh, how Ray. Now it awoke. Was it? <laughs> it wasn't it was grumpy. A, it was a na- Was a na- It seemed like Kylo Ren and uh, Ray were just. They were just naturals that. Really, yeah. really hadn't uh, uh, come into their own yet, you know. And they figured were out Robert who they Redfording were. it up. They were the natural. <laughs> we're the natural. Oh man, 
man. Or the, feels so natural. The feels big, so Robert the Redford. Big naturals. Hail Hydra. <laughs> Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra, indeed. Yeah. I, uh, oh, Robert Redford. But yeah, I really, I really liked, uh, you know, Kylo Ren and Ray's characters. Um, and I thought that... I was, Kylo I was Ray. Like, I, I, I was like, okay, this looks like it's going to be... And, and their fights, uh, when they fought, when they fought, um, they really looked like uh, two... Fighters fighting. Yeah, <laughs> well, two, two um, op- polar opposites that I think uh, could... Either one could have beat the other one. You know, like, it was, mm. it, they were well mad. My number seven uh, is Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. One of the uh, worst movies ever made, ever, in the history of film. Again, somebody's opinion. My opinion is, it was a cool movie. I liked watching the, uh, how the Empire basically uh, got its force together and uh, started Get the war. Get your force together. <laughs> Yeah, and like tensions rise, you know, it's like almost watching the Cold War right before. Is that the one know, that's space opera where they're looking at jellyfish or whatever and they're like, oh, Anakin, look at the bubbles. I can bring people back from the dead if you touch me. You know. Well, I don't know what movie you saw. <laughs> Probably the Attack of the Clones. Uh, that movie's horrible. Uh, it's garbage. Well, and then there was The Phantom <laughs> Menace, and I re- again. Oh, so that's your number eight. Yeah, that's number eight. Okay, number that, eight. I, I wasn't number. really... I dug that lightsaber fight, man. That's all that it, saved it, it for me. Yeah, it, it was a good lightsaber fight. It was um, a good lightsaber fight. And uh, From a young age, that lightsaber fight, you know. And uh, what's uh guy who plays Qui-Gon Jinn? Um, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson, thank you. Hollywood um, Babylon's he's, world famous Liam Neeson. Oh, yeah. He's, um, you know, he, he did a good... Uh, there was a lot of good acting in that movie. He's like, you and know I what midichlorians I'm, are if you let me touch you, Anakin. Because <laughs> it's yeah, but when you have an adult that you trust, when you're at a young age, that's, that's exactly like, who you should question. Well, you don't. Well, you just didn't trust. Maybe. I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I have very strong yeah. trust issues. But aside from that, like, I just feel like he got suckered. There was no proof that would make him want to cross over. Like he seemed like such a dedicated Jedi to good. And then when it became, he, he had a lot of. He questioned a lot of what the council yeah, that's did the thing. And then the he beginning. questioned the council. And then why wouldn't he question? I mean, the dude made him kill because, Dooku. Because he's like, ba- kill him it's it's basically cut his like, head off with two lightsabers, well, which was awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It's basically when somebody you know when somebody tells you exactly what you want to hear. Yeah, and you instantly you don't even think about asking proof. for proof. You just you're like, dude, that makes so much sense. This is what I'm going with. This is also That's my perspective like over the years. Me. So, like, I've rewatched it and rewatched it, and it was upon like rewatching it again, you know, recently that it's like, yeah, he got played. Yeah, like, well, I know he's he's, there, he's he's always been played, but I feel like he himself didn't do himself justice by like demanding it. For his own peace of mind. Like, he seemed like he always wanted to follow. And I guess that's kind of the Jedi way in, to an extent. But if he questioned, you know, Qui-Gon, and if he questioned uh, Obi-Wan, why not question Palpatine? Why not doubt everyone? And then truly go rogue. And, you know, like... I don't know, man. I that's the Vader story I want. Like, I want the Vader that's like, fuck you, show me. You know, like... That's my Vader. Because he's so powerful. Why is he a Chicago gangster now? <laughs> That'd be awesome. He's got a Tommy gun and a badass suit. And he's just like, fuck you, show me. Get out of here, you filthy animal. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um... Home Alone style. I was... <laughs> Keep the change! <laughs> now, I, um... Well, for me, uh... Number nine was a Solo. Um, the most recent one. Um, that one... I'd like to go it on was, record and switch my nine and ten as well. It's an it's an, for a uh, movie I haven't seen. It's better than Attack of the Clones. <laughs> that's your opinion, and you're entitled to. No, it. this is your list, sir. Solo, so it's solo number solo, nine. I really. Solo number nine. <laughs> the ninth solo movie. You're on board for that, right? <laughs> no, I. You're like not. it got great. They brought in Boba Fett. You can see his wiener. I don't even want the second one. Honestly, I mean there is. There was a couple you're, you're of like there was a couple of me. there was a couple of scene um, cool action scenes in the movie. Um, I thought action. there were certain good actors in the movie, um, but I didn't really. I didn't think it was all that great. I was not. I was. I wasn't impressed. Um, number ten uh, was the Last Jedi, and as I do like uh, Luke Skywalker, I don't like what they did with his character 
at all in that movie. Movie. I don't know why. I don't know why at the beginning he was drinking green sea cow titty milk. That Mm. was just gross. That that was gross to the point it was like like creepy weird. Like like this is a family movie and he's standing there just like has like a you know like those those squeeze bottles that they have for like pro athletes and he's just squeezing this green nastiness into his mouth like and look and like looking ray in the eye like all angry and everything like what am i watching this is like it's a, disgusting and agree with you by the way 100 percent. yeah and agree uh, with you 100 and the whole time the worst image they, they hey here's your up, hero look what he because at the end of the last mm-hmm. yeah come on man i've been a luke fan for They're a long like, here, time watch your hero satisfy this bum it's like no oh, he's my hero oh, that's gross yeah, like why what? am i watching this why is he in some and then kind the, of the, weird the animal like turns video and now. Looks at, yeah yeah well, it, it, it was it was really creepy was that was a, that was the creepiest Four form. yeah the creepiest star wars scene ever and i was i was embarrassed to be watching it and, and you were watching it with your mother you were like mother i'm so sorry father forgive me and then your parents just got up and left in different directions they, <laughs> they were like we abandoned our child yeah I, I can't believe you brought me to see this movie i am done right here right you're now. done professionally <laughs> as a family no i really uh that was disappointing the main thing was that uh you know, they set it up, you know, to... You knock him down. <laughs> well, for Ray to get trained by, by Luke Skywalker. Oh, man. And, that they first... fu- and they just made Luke, like, like whine the whole time. And I didn't like that. Man. How about that over-the-shoulder, just hawking that fucking uh, lightsaber? It's like... No. No, that, that that's not on the... That's... It's that, that's that, that was messed up. I did not like that at all. Um... I didn't like uh, I didn't like the way that they killed uh, Darth Sidious, or uh, what was it? Was that his name? Or the the bad guy, the with the weird shapen head, like Kylo, the one that Kylo Ren kills. Um, I, the only the only decent thing about that movie. Oh yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only decent thing about that movie was the lightsaber uh, fight when uh, Ky- Kylo Ren and Rey go back to back and fight all those and uh, the guards. The guards. And the, yeah, that's that, that is a badass. Was, when they t- went back to back, I was like, "All right, this is what I've been waiting for." Blank um, man style, Batman and Robin style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it was really cool to watch. Um, but uh, the whole casino bit, um, that whole side plot was a waste. It was a total. Waste because it was Garbage. all it was it was all for naught. Um, the guy ended up betraying him anyway, and they spent I don't know how much time and you know uh, going into going off to that other going planet and coming back and uh, and the whole time while that's going on, it's like they have the rebel fleet and the bad uh, uh, all, all these star destroyers, the Empire is like throwing rocks at them from a distance for like an hour and a half, and like you're telling me that a broken down Rebel fleet couldn't get overtaken by these elite. Um, that very much bothered me. Fleet yeah. and um, but that scene when um, when Laura Dern Laura Dern that, fucks that ship up. Now, yeah, I don't care if it cool. doesn't work. It looked physic like it looked really cool, you know, or whatever. Like it looked amazing. The theater, we would saw it together. The theater was dead silent. I think yeah. I think all I did was say I was like, "Oh fuck, that's awesome!" But I like whispered it loudly as I do. This yeah. is my whisper voice. By yeah, the way. it was great. It, <laughs> that part was great. But, but other, the theater was uh, the dead movies, silent. The movie as like, a whole was a total disappointment. Total disappointment. I can't say it any better than that. Uh-
we had like a crossover, you know, where Star or the Star Trek Starsky Bulls, and Hutch, or the, like the board Star Wars and Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> oh my god, everything was... you've ever wanted, and Snoop Dogg's back. Oh, uh, <laughs> Star Wars with pimp suits, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You got Lando. Why? Why? That's not a pimp suit. That's like a cape. That's like, like it a, is a cape. There ain't no like about it. It's, it's like a, a Dracula cape. cape, sir. It's like one of those like. What's his name? Billy Batson. Shazam. Shazam wears like a half cape. It's like when a man wears a half shirt. What are you fucking doing? Mm. Like, just get yourself a whole shirt. Just get yourself a fucking shirt. You know, or a like fucking cape. This is my <laughs> fucking cape. sketches So where are we? What are we doing? Uh, we're at uh, Alamo Draft House. Speak up, son. We're actually at uh, Alamo Draft House, and we're going to check out the Battle of the Sketches. They, it's a sketch comedy bit. Everybody takes takes their best sketch and, and sends in the tape, and they pick the best ones, and we are about to go see all of them and then vote on which one we think is the best. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Okay. Check it out. And I gotta say, it was pretty cool, man. First time for me going. I, uh, we met some creators. We met Glam Fam, awesome. And now we subscribe to Glam Fam. Awesome. <laughs> of course, we're just gonna say you. That's all we're gonna say. Thank you. Yeah. We're Glam Fam. Glam Fam. Uh, Glam Fam comedy on YouTube. Find us on YouTube and we'll subscribe. Right on. Awesome. Hell yeah. You can check out Adrian and Chris. Adrian and Chris. That's it. Yeah, Adrian and Chris. Awesome. Congratulations again. If not, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Y'all take care. Yeah, that's okay. See y'all later. I went to the last one. This one was even better than the last one. Um, a lot more sketches. A lot more people showed up. Um, it was fun, man. I, I had a great time. I had a blast. I thought, I I thought really it was did. a lot of fun. I um, I really liked... Uh, there's a lot of sketches that I really liked. Orlando Otis, Glam Fam, Hot Pot Comedy, Pendulum, and Friendship Comedy. And there's a total of six sketches. So go ahead and run that. Can we get some more? Hey, kind of worry. Give it up for the folding chairs. The last one you just saw, Onion Yoga, everybody. Oh, Woo, we're here. Oh, all right. That was, awesome. I really liked it. I, I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> uh, Kevin and Chow, water guy. Water. One more time for funniest cartoon, everybody. Yeah. 
um, kind of like energy and like poppiness. Like and even when he was saying it's over, yeah, this is a big mistake. We shouldn't. We should not communicate anymore. He was right? Very confident and very serious about. Yeah. you uh, believe they, these actors were great. They did an amazing job, both of them, the, the young woman and um, and, I didn't catch, the, and the waiter was good. It's too. difficult to catch names. Uh, this uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the an animated. animated sketches. There was also yeah. the the getting a dog for Hitler, and um, there was another one. It was called uh, Los Barbarians. Los Barbarians That's, was funny. Yeah, with that slow it was like, get, uh, <laughs> mounts to the guy's face and just starts fucking his face. Basically. Yeah, and then <laughs> his sinuses really... started acting up. Oh, what was uh, what was that one that had uh, all those? I feel like uh, um, all those squishy sounds. Like, uh, where they're, like, making, like, a smoothie or That's, something? That, that, that may be from, uh, uh the Pop, uh, Hot Pop. Uh, yeah, Hot, hot Pop. Uh, no, Hot Pot, that was, uh, that was the one. Yeah, but those are the same the cats thing. that did the, the, the drink. Oh, it was the same people. Oh, uh, yeah. A ASMR. Um, I think that might have been it. Uh. Because I don't, I don't, I can't see which other one it would have been. But what? that, but that, uh. Like, they showed a bunch of really close-up pictures of, uh, you oh. know, them sticking the straw into the drink and, like, rubbing it around. They the used all the sound effects to basically, like, yeah. in the stomp style, they used the sound effects to create music. And it was um, interesting and kind of perverse, to say the least, because some of those yeah. squishy sounds at the end, um, as Jason Mary would say, um, wet mouth sounds. Um, <laughs> it's, it was rowdy, but I liked it. It was hilarious. In my opinion, it was very hilarious. So. Yeah, I thought that was... A this really guy's skin was crawling, he was like... <laughs> I was laughing, man. I thought it was hilarious. He's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting right next to him, so... <laughs> like, it was like a, like a... Almost like being in a small uh, artist community just for just for an hour or two. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it, I, I really enjoyed that. Well, it started at 8... But what did we what did we drink? It started, tonight? It started at eight, and then um, it before went, we, we it was at the Alamo Draft House, which we got some footage of. But what were we drinking? Can you remember? Here's the test. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> You're like an IPA. It was easy. You it, it was an IPA from uh, Weathered Souls. Uh, Weathered Souls. Forty eighty, and it was 40, uh, and it was 40. pretty good. I'm um, I like IPAs, and uh, this one was pretty good. I give it the Chris Stamp. Bam. And I also liked uh, uh, folding chairs. Uh, meat. What, oh, was, it? what the, was that one? What was that one called? Uh, okay, the, the big meats meat. Big meats that meat. That one. That one uh, from the beginning of the night. That was. Uh, it was what category was it in? That was uh, in the funniest commercial. Funniest commercial. Okay, yeah, big, big meat. We're gonna look up like, funniest fucking commercial. Like there was no. Fat I love on that water. Meat. Don't get me wrong, but big meats. Like I feel like that sketch. Other than glam fam. Like pound, um, like pound for pound, like every he line. He will beat that meat. Exactly. Pound. There's no fat on that meat. And <laughs> every single line, you needed every every single single line in that uh, sketch. Yeah, um, it's it was like, it was all good. There's like no, every, there was nothing wasted. There it was, was all gold. It was all no, gold. No dead time. You know, um, so, some of the no, sketches. Be dead. Look at that wall. Look, look at this door. Yeah. See, this is the door where we put all the meats that he uh, that were unbeatable. See how it's blank. Yeah, I will beat that meat. I guarantee it. To your satisfaction. Yeah, that was the other thing too. It's like, oh, what was it at the end? Uh, jo what are the hosts' names again? George and... Um, honestly, I didn't catch their names. I'll pop their names in here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I got to well, see these hands. I got to I shake. Like, I, got I to did like them. them though. Uh, I think that, I thought they were good hosts. Um, uh, good banter back and forth. Um, very funny. Uh, and People they work. So. And they uh, like they they were very interactive with the crowd. Uh, I thought they were really good uh, keeping the crowd. Uh, There's even a, a into it just like a, a photo good session and question session after the event. Um, like we said, it was at. Alan the other okay. one that I really liked uh, was uh, Angels. With Angels. The, yeah, they t uh, this chick uh, is uh, one. The, well, the friend is under the impression that uh, they're, they're going, going out, out to the club, on a Friday night. They're you know, dressed in they got black and dresses, th and <laughs> she's thinking that you know they're going to hang out with uh, uh, the other uh, the family or whatever, like the yeah, hot the other cousins, family, and the hot cousins. Yeah, and she's getting all done up with her makeup and uh, t uh, not wearing and, underwear, yeah, going commando and things like that. <laughs> that and, was... uh, and then at the end, she, uh, towards the end, she's like, it's actually my it's a, it's a funeral. Uncle. It's my uncle's funeral. My favorite uncle, actually. It's 
<laughs> they were uh, they were excellent. Very very good. Uh, very funny uh, young women. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I really uh, I really enjoyed um, did you meeting just, them. Did you just kiss my forehead? Yes, I did. It's like, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm visiting my daughter's grave. <laughs> <laughs> amazing stuff, amazing the, stuff. The awkward silence that comes after that. I was laughing so hard. It was the, the it cat call. What were their, their what were their sketches? Oh, say so, okay. So Glamfam had a uh, Bert the cat collar. Yeah, they which was the. Did you just kiss my forehead? That they one climbing all over the dude's car. That was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Was, oh, and they're from Austin, by the way. Yeah, they uh, they came down here for uh, for the show, and um, it was. I'm glad they did because they had some really good stuff. Um, they also had um, this one right here, um, uh, "Wake Up." That was the one about. Uh, it, it was almost like a music. It was like a music video, really. Um, yeah, where yeah, they're, yeah. Where they're um, like, we're gonna fuck on Sunday. We're gonna fuck on Monday. And it, uh, there were some sketches that uh, I didn't. Uh, we didn't get to mention. We didn't have time to mention. Yeah. Like, there, there was so much, man. There was so much content, and we're, and we're I, still bouncing off the walls. I was, as you can see. And, and we also have to go to work tomorrow. Laughing my ass off. I was uh, at a lot of stuff. Um, even, uh, even some of the sketches that weren't as funny as some, uh, as some of the ones uh, that we maybe mentioned. They all they had, had good funny moments. stuff in it. Like they, they there's were, stuff in there. Yeah, like. They, <laughs> Like, like seven, had, the Rosa, the Mexican Roseanne, that was a great, I thought that yeah, was Yeah, cool. I, I did like uh, how it had a platform, you know, like they had the, uh, uh, like the sitcom platform, you know, where you had the, uh, the, the laugh the, track, the, the laugh track, thank you very much. I know the and, uh, yeah, and the, and the same thing with like, of course, the, uh, the, uh, spooky hunters. Okay, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, that's it had, a, awesome. they had a platform, and you could tell what they were going for, and, uh, uh and they did, they did it pretty well. What I, was the I other name it. of the sketch besides spooky hunters? It was also called what? Rosa. No, 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 the, the same, the people that were doing it, uh, spaces, that's what it is, taping spaces, where, oh, okay. uh, it's like yeah. the guy was using his hair straightener to make pasta, <laughs> and it was like, but I used it to... Like iron out my notes. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck? Put it in a dryer. And, and, then, and, 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 then, and then they cut away, and they're saying, and it's almost like a like a Big Brother or like some uh, some of those silly yeah, they uh, do the, the uh, reality TV show in, side interviews talking about where they break the fourth wall and, and, the, and they have the, the and they have the moments like where it's like dun 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 and it's just like reaction shot and yeah, then so when his eyes goes, get big, it's like what happened? All these light bulbs? You see a guy's eyes get wide. He's like. I didn't like that motherfucker, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, just... interesting show, um, like very unique. I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever been to an event quite like this uh, here in San Antonio or anywhere really. I um, would, like I said, I would compare. It's a perfect forum um, for people uh, who want to do uh, sketches. Um, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. So yeah, okay. Um, so yes. Yeah. Chris liked it. I also say it does not suck. It did not suck, and I want to be a part of it. So. <laughs> All right, so you've been watching Adrian and Chris. This is episode eight. Hey, stay up, my friends. <laughs> and stand down. <laughs>
for young artists that are uh, you know trying to be creative or even anybody who's uh, trying to get into uh, sketch comedy it was just uh, it was just a great time 